off the day with a big one at the top of the top flight. Celtic thumping Rangers by four goals to nil. Giovanni van Bronckhorst's side had no answers to Ange Postacoglu's team. They were relentless right from the start and thoroughly deserving of their four nil victory. They go five points clear at the top of the table. Let's now concentrate on the five remaining games in the top flight and the big ones in the championship. I'll keep you across all the goals from all the leagues right across Scottish Troop. Well, that's coming up on Open All Mics. All the grounds, all the goals, all the news. This is Open All Mics from Sports Sound. From BBC Radio Scotland. Right, we've spoken to our pundits for a scene set at all the grounds across Scottish football this afternoon in the top flight. Let's get back to Alan Preston. He's watching Hibs against Kilmarnock this afternoon. And you get the team news, Al. Uh, Hibs make two changes, Kenny. Doyle and Doyle Hayes. Doyle, Doyle is away to Kilmarnock on loan, can't play. Doyle Hayes drops out, in comes Kenny and Henderson. So will go Marshall in the goals. Back four, Cadden, Porches, Harlan, Cabrera. Kenny, Campbell, Newell and Henderson with Johan just playing off with Boyle. For Kilmarnock is also two changes. Donnelly and McKenzie out, Power and Shaw in. So they'll go walking in the goals. A back three, right Taylor Mayo. Everless with Power, Polworth, Armstrong and Chris in with Shaw and Cameron. And the referee for this one is John Beaton. Thank you, Alan. Let's then get to Livingston against Hearts there for us is Rory Lloyd. The team news there, Rory. Yes, indeed. Um, Livingston make one change from their midweek defeat. And out goes Shinny to the bench. In comes Penrise. They're linking up 4-4-1-1. Uh, Shamal George in goals, a back four of Devlin Kelly, Oberlei and Montano, midfield four of Holt, Pittman, Omeonga and Penrise, and Ismael Calvez will support the impressive Joel Nubley up front. Three and a half thousand tickets sold from the Hearts faithful, makes for a good away support today. They'll go 4-2-3-1 with Craig Gordon in goals, back four, Civic, Nielsen, Kingsley, Cochrane, in front of them will be Devlin and Halliday. Three will support the new signing Humphreys up front, and that will be Gary Mackay, Stephen, Joel Grant, and Barry Mackay. The referee today is Willie Collin. To Stephen Craig and at Fair Park, Motherwell against Dundee United. Stephen, the team news there? Yes, Kenny, we're just underway here a couple of minutes, and unsurprisingly, both managers keep the same teams that won during the week. Of course, Dundee United won down at uh, Almond Vale or down at uh, the Tony Macaroni Stadium against Livingston. Motherwell beat Inverness here, so Motherwell line up with Liam Kelly in goal, a back four, Paul McGinn, Sondre Solham Johansson. Ricky Lamy and Matt Penny. A midfield trio of Callum Slattery, Sean Goss and Blair Spittle and Ross Tierney. And Joe Efford will play in behind the main man from Motherwell at the minute, Kevin Van Veen. For Liam Fox's side, Ericsson and goal, a back three of Ran Edwards, Charlie McGrew and Ross Graham. Five across the middle from right to left, Liam Smith, Jimmy McGrath, Dylan Levitt, Ian Harks and Aziz Bayich. And up front, Stephen Fletcher and Tony Watt, who I have to say got a warm reception as a former Motherwell player. Thank you to Stephen Craig and to Willie Miller in Dingwa. Willie brought us the big news earlier. No sign of Christian Ramirez in the Don squad today. You've got the team news in full there, Willie. I do, yeah. Malcolm Mackay uses his squad in full. He makes six changes uh, to the team that he was defeated midweek by Celtic. In come Laidlaw, Baldwin, Cancola, Callahan, Danda, and Harula. And uh, out go Eastwood, Sims, Samuel, Harman, Latoure, and Watson. Uh, their starting lineup laid, laid long goal back for Johnson, Baldwin, Ikevite, and Purrington. A midfield three Tilson, Callan, Cancola, White up top, and Danda and Hywilla supporting them. For Aberdeen, they make three changes. Um, in comes Clarkson, Hayes, and Coulson. Out goes Morris, Kennedy, and Mackenzie. Uh, their uh, starting lineup. Russian goals, back four, Richardson, Stewart, Scales and Coulson, midfield three, Ramadani, Clarkson, McCrory, Majofsky up front with Basawan and Hayes supporting him as well and the referee is Kevin Clancy. Thank you to Willie Miller, to McDermott Park, then St Johnson against St Mirren, Stuart Kettlewell is there for us, you've got the, the team news there Stuart. Yes, Kenny, as I mentioned, a couple of changes for St Johnston. Clark and Montgomery come in for Phillips and Brown. They'll line up with Matthews and goals. It'll be a back three of McGowan, Mitchell and Considine. It'll be a midfield four of Wright, Halberg, Carey and Montgomery. And it'll be a front three of Murphy, Clark and May. For St Mirren, as I mentioned also, no changes. They go with Carson and goals. Back three of Dunn, Gallagher and Fraser. A midfield five of Tate, O'Hara, Erehan, Bacchus and Strain. And it'll be that same front two of Curtis Main and Jonah Younger. And the referee for this one is Colin Stephen. Let's dip into the championship then. Our both against Partick. This all there for us is Kenny Crawford. 
Yeah, our both experience in a much different season so far than they did the last season, Kenny. Second in the table, they finished on that brilliant run they went on. And this time they are rooted to the bottom after five games without a win in the league so far. And they've only scored three goals in their opening five league games. So they could do with a result today. On the other hand, Partick Thistle, they could go top today, uh, depending on results. They're one point behind Air United. Partick Thistle in second at the moment. Some interesting team news. Michael McKenna is uh, injured for our growth, so he sits out. Um, and Dylan Tate makes his debut for our broth. He's on loan from Hibs. Partick Thistle Ooh. made three changes. One of them is Brian Graham coming back into the starting 11. Yeah, dreadful start for Dick Campbell. Said, of course, knocked out the cup at Partick Thistle at the weekend. Two draws and three defeats from their opening five league games to Dens Park, then Dundee against Queen's Park. And there for us is Chick Young. <clears throat> yeah, Kenny, if, uh, if, you'd, if I'd said to you start, before they start the season that this would be a chance for one of these teams to go to the top of the championship, you'd have thought it would be Dundee, but if, oh, here's a chance actually for the Dead Spark side opening seconds here. I know it's Queen's Park who could go top if they win this one and two other results go their way today. They've had a terrific start to their campaign and have got to keep that up, of course, against a Dundee side who sit mid-table at the moment. So an interesting encounter in front of a, a fair old crowd here at Dance Park this afternoon. A home team goal with Harrison Sharp and goal, Kimmy Kerr, Tyler French, Jordan McGee, Lee Ashcroft, Josh Mulligan, Zach Robinson, Paul McMullen, Ben Williamson, Lyle Cameron and Joe Grayson on the bench for them. Legends, the goalkeeper, McGowan, McGinn, Robertson, Rudden, Anderson and Strachan. Uh, and the Spiders goal, Callum Ferry and goal, uh, Robson, uh, Tom Robson, Lee Day, Jack Thompson, Dom Dominic Thomas, Jake Davidson, Scott Williamson, Grant Savory, Simon Murray, the captain, Malaji Botang and Stephen Eze. Another chance for Dundee in this early stages. So on the bench for Queen's, Erte, Naismith, Brown, Longridge, Kenny, McPake, Moore, Bannon uh, and Botang. Um, the referee here at Dents Park is... is is, is, I'd love to tell you, but he's on the team chair. <laughs> the suspense is <laughs> killing us I'm there. Trying to, I'm trying to find an excuse later on for the Willie, <laughs> Willie, Willie, Willie Miller pole at Dens Park where you can't see the goal on the right-hand side. But that, to be fair, it doesn't pretty good me saying, telling you who the referee is. I'll get back to you on that one. A bit like a joke without a punchline there, Check. OK, Play to Capolo, Morton against <laughs> Air United there for us is Derek Ferguson, the table-topping Air United side. I'm sure we'll be confident of victory this afternoon, Derek. They certainly will, uh, Kenny. And surprise, surprise, pouring the rain down here in Greenock. Uh, I'll give you teams, two teams are unchanged. Uh, Kenny, because they're going well, as you've just mentioned, they're united at the top. But first of all, uh, Morton, they go with Shweeky in goals in a back four of King, O'Connor, Baird and Pignantello. Gillespie will just sit in front of that back four with Muirhead, Blues, Crawford and Kabai making up that midfield with Katongo up top on his own for Air United. As you're saying, Kenny, top of the table, they're on change. It's Albison in goals, a back four of Houston, Kurt, Musonda and Redden. Midfield four of O'Connor, Dempsey, Murdoch and Ashford and we go with Mackenzie and Akinwemi up top and the referee here is David McGeeky. Thanks to Derek Ferguson. Allo have gone ahead very early on away to Clyde. They lead by one goal to another scored early in their game last week as well. Did Brian Rice's side. Uh, we brought you the, the full-time score earlier from the, the English Premier League. Everton nil, Liverpool nil. Everton thought they'd a late winner there but uh, VAR came into play and that goal was ruled offside. Two early goals in League Two. Elgin City won, Bonnie Rigros nil and Stennis Muir won, Stranraer nil. So, Rory, what about the start there for, for Hearts? Hearts have started really well, I must say. Uh, Cochrane down that left-hand side caused a couple of a couple of problems. It was a diagonal ball from the centre-back. He did look a couple of yards offside. He played it into the box and it was a half-chance for Stephen Humphreys who volleyed over the bar. He's put another ball across the face of goal, Alec Cochrane, and um, Humphreys was caught in his heels slightly. Could have possibly just dived at it and had a wee chance. Uh, but Hearts controlling this game. Livingston have barely strung two passes together. Do you think Hearts fans, Michael, would be disappointed with, the, with this transfer? We've spoken a lot about how tired the players have looked, how short the squad looks. We heard Robin Nielsen speaking about Xander Clark. But overall, a disappointing window for the, the Jambos? Um, yes and no. I would say no because I think when you look at the... They did a lot of good uh, work in the squad early in the camp and early in the window. But yes, in regards to... Because of the injuries that they've got in the last week. But then that becomes very difficult because you're, you're sort of chasing your tail. It's, it's unexpected acquisitions that they perhaps were then looking to try to to bring in to bolster the squad. In terms of being tired, I, I, you know, I, 
I didn't. I've not been able to see any of the performance from midweek because I was up uh, doing the Ross County Celtic game. Disappointing for them to get knocked out the, the Premier Sports Cup. But performances otherwise that I've seen, I think Hearts have looked pretty good. I was at Tyne Castle last week for the the, uh, the league game against um, St Johnston, and that was a good performance from Hearts. The only disappointment was obviously the fact that um, Kai Rolls has uh, broken his foot, and um, and Liam Boyce. You know, these are these are bad injuries, which, as I said asks a totally different question of what they're looking to do in the window late on. You only had a few days to react. Alan, you were saying they looked a bit jaded, Hearts. Uh, they looked tired. <clears throat> they certainly, I think the, the amount of games this early on in the season are very difficult. It really was for them. Um, not having the League Cup games as well, they can't really get up to speed like the rest of the teams. They're only really playing friendlies. Are you, th- Alan, are you talking Alan, about the, yeah. the League Cup, uh, the Premier Sports Cup performance during the week yeah. against... Uh, yeah, I, they I looked, mean, I didn't see leggy, it at all. Michael. They yeah. looked very, very leggy. Uh, they had two efforts at goal the whole night, and that's not like Hearts. You know, normally they're flying down the wings. Yeah. Uh, Mackay one st- side for us. That didn't happen the other night. They were they were poor. They did look really tired. Because we we did the you know the league game uh, the, yeah. the, against St Johnston last week and. I thought they looked pretty good. You know, they looked yeah. vibrant. They looked, you know, um, a lot of energy. So, I mean, look, there's no doubt that obviously... Should they be, should with they be those... tired, though? Should they be tired in September, the beginning of September? But it's not so much about, you know, the time of the year. It's the volume of games in such a so, short no? space of time. I think, personally. You know, Ma- Michael, uh, what, 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 like Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, that kind of a routine. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a cop-out, uh, Michael, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> well, you know, they shouldn't be tired at this uh, uh, stage of the season. Well, oh God, they, they've got sports they're tired, coming well, out. I'm they've got sports leggy. itis coming out their ears. I'm not saying they're tired, I said <laughs> well, they're leggy. That, 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 that sounds like preparation then. Maybe they've had to make this trip across to Ross County as well, Willie. <laughs> taking, a hell of, taking a hell of a lot out of them. Well, I'll tell you, I hope I perform <laughs> better than they're today. But, but fans will be tuning in. Willie's got a good point, he's not Michael. Fans will be tuning in to hear players looking a bit oh, jaded. Oh, there's a chance got to be yep. a penalty, surely. On you go, Alan. Boyle's brought down, the referee doesn't know the assistant, he's asking for it, he has brought down, I, th- oh. I thought it was a penalty kick. Whoever's there needs to tell uh, me, Leanne. Yeah, I can see it, Alan. It the, looks the, a penalty to me. He's quite a distance in terms consult. of the camera angle, Boyle's certainly looking for it. has to be a red it. card as well, and it is. It's a red card. Certainly a, a lunge anyway, it's a great run from Boyle, isn't it? The pace blistering, just outside the box from you. Michael's here getting a look, in a, a look at it as well, I actually think. For me, it's outside the box. Ash Taylor is the one. He's been red carded. Joe it's, Wright saying he was round the back of him. No, I don't, no. I mean, he's. You know, you're it's talking through. about the edge of the box. It's yeah. like it's a touch and a strike and goal. It's a goal scoring opportunity. So yeah. from that perspective, what, there's no doubt. It's just as Leanne said. It's it, because it's obviously sliding as well. Where is the point of contact? It's very, very tight. Um, I think Leanne's probably, I'd probably agree oh. with just on the edge of the box. John Grant's got to do better there, sorry Michael, big, big chance, Kingsley plays the ball right across the face of goal, it makes its way all the way to Barry Mackay, plays a lovely little slide rule pass into Joel Grant who breaks the lines and for me he's got to do better, he hits it high and wide, he's got to go across the keeper there, that's a chance for Hearts. Yeah, he's just lost his bearings hasn't he Rory, because yeah. he's just gone beyond that front post Grant, great run, great play down the side, um, I think he, he feels he's maybe just inside the post and he's... He's not, he's just blazed it wide. Yeah, it's an interesting one hearing the guys chatting as well. I mean, I look at Hart's bench today, I appreciate there might be a few niggles on there, but Shanklin, Forrest, Ginelli, from your guys' point of view, I mean, obviously you want to win every game, but possibly it's not going to be possible, you know, playing all these European games with Hearts and the league games. What what games would you put more emphasis on? Do you, do you try and finish third again and then over the course of time build up your European performances? It seems at the moment Robbie right. Wilson's putting Rory, more just emphasis. Just a minute, we'll just a minute. We're going to go east Port just runs over it. No! Great save by the keeper, knocks it away, the free kick was... So it's a and free it's in, kick. he gets the rebound and goes back to Newell. And he hits it with his left foot into the ground, through the wall the second time, into the back of the net. Hibbs take the lead, oh. 11 and a half minutes on the clock, Hibbs won for Manic now. Yeah, it's a great hit from Newell, but the, the wall are absolutely sleeping, Alan, because yeah. the amount of players that they've got lined up and it comes back out for a second bite and Newell's got time to control it and the composed finish just to throw the bodies. Nestles in the bottom corner. Was it, the, was it the right call, the free kick? It's very, very tight, isn't it? For me, it was definitely a free kick. It's outside the outside the area. Um, last man challenge, I would agree. I think Michael alluded to that as well. Probably a red card is the right decision. But there, from the initial free kick, keepers just put it right back into that danger spot again. Nobody switched on the wall, don't know where it's gone. It's a great finish from Newell, though. Great technique, composure over the top of the ball. Left foot does everything right. 
just Willie. deflects back off of the uh, <laughs> Kilmarnock wall. Yeah, and just to, like, to go back to the, I didn't see the Kilmarnock game during the week. Up until this point, the games I've seen of Hearts last week after the um, the European game, I thought Hearts were very good against St Johnston. The, as I said, they had lots of energy in their game. On a more general point, I don't care what time of year it is. If you're playing a heavy run of fixtures of games and it's the same sort of players, then yeah, you're going to be tired. It doesn't I, matter. I it doesn't matter, that, Michael. I, I think at well, the beginning of the season, I disagree. You, you're a lot. Of, you, you, <laughs> that's fine. In the conversation, <laughs> no, no. Michael disagrees. That's <laughs> it done. But, but, but the point that Willie's making, if you if you're a fan listening to that, uh, the, uh, uh, surely it is relevant at this stage of the season. It's different six games, six months in. Right, let, me, be... let me just exaggerate right. it slightly, right? right? If you were to go and run like 10 kilometres and then I said to you steady, like a Michael, couple of hours steady. later <laughs> I said to you a couple of hours later Kenny go and run 10 kilometres and then do it another couple of hours later of course you'd be tired so right. of course it's relevant the time that you have to rest in between those it doesn't matter what time of year it is that you're doing that it's the relevance is how heavy is that block of fixtures irrespective of what time of year it is. Of course, once you add but, in the volume of games over a longer Ray, period of time, that has Rangers an impact like as well. Yeah, but, but, but the thing is, Michael, you know, Michael. it's two games a week we're talking. We're not talking about three or four games a week here. I, um, I'm so talking we about... should be trained up to be able to cope at any time of the year with two games in a week. I'm talking about a more general point in regards to whether it's two games a week or, or whatever. I think that it does... It doesn't matter for me what time of year it is. The longer it goes on the year, the more obvious you then become saying, oh, well, I've had a lot of games over a, a, a period of Yeah, and of it time. is only our, our uh, opinions that are saying they look leggy. You know, maybe the players wouldn't say that they feel well, tired. Well, the, well, the changes the performance Robbie Nielsen's levels making, Leanne, weren't he, there. Thinks too. he thinks as well, Robbie Nielsen's making the changes, so he obviously feels that's relevant as well. Otherwise, you know, he'd put, I don't think he's strongest 11 are on the park today. No, so well, he, he obviously said feels... That. He yeah, said that the yeah. other evening after the game, that they looked leggy. They looked, you know, they certainly looked leggy, but... I'm just interested in Willie, just to, to touch back, I heard Kenny asking if Aberdeen will be up there challenging. Is it, I've been but was it led to believe 13 months on the road without a victory apart from one time in Perth, is that right? So you need to get your away record that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem with history, it's all in the past. <laughs> You're asking me, a, you're asking me opinion Wally, about Wally, the Wally, future, and Wally. I'm giving you an opinion about the future. Wally. I'm not giving you an opinion I've been, about I've the past. I've been on the radio Alan. for you for 18 years, and all you've talked about is the past. <laughs> <laughs> right, just the good bits, though. Aye. How, that, how, that, the, how the, the staff did the staff 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 in the two stars in the badge? Nah, that cup they didn't play for anymore. The one they didn't play for anymore. Two stars in the badge, Alan. The cup that got melted down for Bill Buckles. I don't have to say anymore. Two stars in the badge. How did on started there, Willie? Leggy. <laughs> I can't remember because I've been concentrating on the conversation so much. They've looked okay, Willie. They They've have, had a couple yeah. of half chances. I, I saw one, was it Bazawan down the right hand side? Good save from the goalkeeper. Uh, Johnny Hayes had one coming in from the yeah, left as well early, just bounced in front of the goalkeeper. Um, so, yeah, they, they started uh, pretty brightly. As long as you keep the ball away from Anthony Stewart playing <laughs> inside the box, because he can't <laughs> use the ball. You know, he's just giving it away again. Every time I see him getting the ball in the box, he gives it away. Uh, an early goal, FC Edinburgh one up away to Airdrie, who are down to 10 men in League One. Alawa opened the scoring in that league early on, 1 0 up away to Clyde into League Two. Uh, Elgin City one, Bonnie Groves nil, and Stennis Muir one, Stranraer nil. And down south in the lunchtime kickoff, it finished goalless uh, in the Merseyside derby, and all the remaining uh, three o'clock kickoffs so far, no goals there at half five. Aston Villa under pressure, I'm sure, is Steven Gerrard there at home to all conquering Manchester City. So let's then get round the grounds. Rory Loy, <coughs> Livingston against Hearts. How are they looking there in the early stages? Yeah, I mean, Livingston have come into it right. so slightly. <laughs> um, they had the ball in the net there, but it was miles offside. Everybody knew it. Um, starting to go into the game, getting used to Hearts shape. Humphreys looks a, looks a handful, big lad, but... Um, he's coming up against Obelai, who's also just as strong, so he's dealt well with that threat. But it's down the left-hand side that Hearts have been really good as they come down here again with uh, Gary Mackay, Stephen and Cochrane. But not too much goal mouth action, I have to say. Still nil-nil, but Hearts looking the better team. For part, Stephen Cragen, Motherwell against and Dean United. Who's in top there in the early stages? Well, it was just a long ball over the top there, Kenny, that... Uh... Ericsson, the goalkeeper, backed off and Kevin Van Veen went through. Motherwell were appealing for a penalty, I'm sure Leanne or Michael will have a look at it, but certainly Motherwell have started really well, they're moving the ball quick. I know a lot of the fans have been talking about the style changing under Stephen Hamill, building from the back, 
Uh, Callum Slattery and Sean Goss from midfield are dictating the play. Dundee United are sitting back, they're absorbing a little bit of pressure. Uh, Joe Efford on the left, uh, sorry, the right hand side has been excellent for Motherwell. Ross Tierney, so it's been all Motherwell. They've had a couple of half chances, but they just can't get the breakthrough. Just in terms of that, that penalty shout, uh, Craggs, Ericsson doesn't do anything wrong, he just almost stands his ground. Kevin Van Veen comes through, there's a slight coming together, but it's more to do with Van Veen outstretched, looking to try and get the touch uh, to take it round the goalkeeper, but certainly no penalty. A couple more goals in League One. Kelty Hearts are 1 0 up against Falkirk. Dunfermline 1 0 up away to Queen of the South. Let's then get to my German part. Stuart Ketterwell is there for us at Mirren on a great run of form. Stuart uh, St Johnson adding to their ranks uh, this week. How has this one opened up? Yeah, it's quite interesting, Kenny. There's not been any goal mouth action worth noting on, uh, as yet, but the, the one thing that's sticking out to me is the, the change of style, I would say, from St Johnson. Uh, they've only really got three defensive minded players in their side. Everybody else wants to think about getting the ball down and passing, and that's exactly what they've done. They've tried to build the play, it's not quite worked yet, um, but that is a big change. I've been used to seeing St Johnson go a little bit more direct, so quite clearly, Callum Davidson's seen something in this personnel that he's, he, he's trying to get a, a different variation from them. St Mirren, much as same Kenny, they've been much the same, the front two do look like they can be a handful and they look strong at the back, they're not giving up too many in the way of, of opportunities but nothing much to report other than that Partick this lot away at our bro this afternoon uh, the Jags were certainly well on top in their game in the League Cup midweek, Kenny Crawford, how they started? 19 minutes gone, it's still now now between our both and Partick Thistle, Kenny, but yeah, Partick Thistle for a couple of half chances. Um, uh, Kevin Holt had a header straight at Derek Gaston, oh, and then chance. Stephen Lawless with a tame shot saved. I'll give that chance a chance there. Yeah, sorry, Stephen Craig in it for a park. It was, it was a great cross from the left hand side from Matt Penny, who is making his second appearance for Motherwell after signing a loan from Ipswich, and once again it's Kevin Van Veen. I think he just gets across the front post, it's Ryan Edwards, he glances the header on and it just clips the top of the crossbar and lands in the top of the net, but Motherwell really pushing and probing. Uh, down south in the Championship, Birmingham 1-0 up away to Preston and that is the first goal that Preston have conceded in their opening eight games. Uh, what a start for them, but they're behind this afternoon. Uh, only scored two goals though I'm being told so we'll keep an eye on all the scores across the country and down south this afternoon let's uh, stay in the championship though Dundee against Queen's Park Chick Young what's happening there in the early stages well Dundee have had a couple of real good chances actually the first one was uh, Zach Robinson he was clean through one and one with the goalkeeper Callum Ferry did very well indeed maybe the Dundee player should have done better and got the ball into the net. That was the first chance. Second one was a ball driven across the face of the goal by Josh Mulligan. Uh, and Queen's Park defended that on their very line and managed to get it over the, the bar for a, for, a, for a corner kick. It's nil nil, but it's not bad in terms of entertainment. But at the moment, I think Dundee are just edging it on pressure and indeed chances. Table toppers, Air United away at Morton this afternoon. Derek Ferguson, have they started well down there? Morton have started very well, uh, Kenny, dominating, certainly in that midfield area, they had a great chance, just uh, 13 minutes, uh, it was on the clock, it was a lovely little through pass to, to Robbie Crawford, just playing in the middle of the park, and uh, ended up with a good save with Charlie Albison in goals, but uh, Air United, they've not been a threat going forward, and it's just on this tight ground as we know, and it's a slick surface this afternoon with all that rain, but uh, certainly Morton dominating this one, and hopefully not too long before we get a goal. Kenny, Look, Kenny yeah. I should say, I, I did some major investigative work and found <laughs> out that the referee is indeed Grant Irvin. Thank you very much. We'll all rest easy now. Uh, the referee there in that game at Dens Park. Uh, interested to get your, your thoughts, guys, on this one. Will, you can kick us off. This situation uh, with Ramirez Aberdeen not on the squad today. He deleted a, a, a message on social media yesterday. It said, make it make sense, please. There are two sides to every story. That's all for now. What on earth? does Jim Goodwin do with this situation? <laughs> Probably ban his players oh. from being in social media, um, which is, you, you know, an outlet for uh, players' frustrations. And, uh, you know, when players go on, they've got to think long and hard about what they're actually saying on there because the manager has got to react to it as well. Um, it's a difficult situation when you've got a player that is patently not wanted at the club. I mean, he's not had a look in at all. He's had the number nine jersey taken off and offered the number 99 jersey. I think the minute that happened, you know that the writing's on the wall. You know, for me, the best thing that could have happened uh, in this situation is for Ramirez to get a move uh, before the transfer deadline. 
uh, there seems to be a lot of frustration from the player and obviously oh, the manager has got to make sure that uh, you know he keeps his discipline within the squad as well and take measures and they can't let uh, players away with uh, saying things on social media that he doesn't think is right so difficult situation one that could have been sorted if Ramirez would have got a move but uh, I don't think Alan Preston is, uh, is an agent for him, so I don't know who works for him. <laughs> but I think would that would have been, been, yeah, been me. If it have been you, <laughs> what definitely. options does he have now, Alan? There's still some clubs in, uh, in and around the world. The windows are still open for a little period of time. He could still go then. Um, but well, I think is he, is he training with the younger boys now as well? It's, it's not a good recipe that you get someone like that in yeah. your, your club. I don't know him as a lad. Has he been harshly treated? Do you think, guys? Because I mean, he was banging in the goals last season. Is it what rate? Is it is, is it his goals return? No, what is the problem? No. You, you don't know. That that's a problem, Kenny. You're asking a question there. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You don't know what the relationship is between player and manager. So all we can do is react to what Jim Goodwin, and hopefully we'll get a quote from him after the game says about the situation or Christian Ramirez and some of his tweets um, you, you know that, that's all that, that's all the only information we can get as far as football is concerned I think, he, I think he's uh, a very fine striker I think uh, he gets himself into really good positions he can score goals he can sniff out a chance he didn't have much uh, in terms of service last season but he still managed to find the back of the net uh, uh, very regularly so yeah. from a footballing point of view I don't think there's a question mark there it's just the decision I don't think the manager wants him at the club Jim Goodwin might clear that up to later on he might not as well but at the same time a resolution has got to it's be a, found it's for a problem it. not Kenny that he, he, he down well I'm saying down tools I'm using that as a phrase uh, two weeks before the end of the season she no, did not have, no I, I was don't that think not? he did no no, he was asked to go away. He was asked to go away. Yeah. Right. So okay. as far as I was, uh, you know, the message that sort of came out was that uh, he wanted to go home, and Ke and what Willie's saying there is what I heard as well that no, he didn't ask to go away. He was told oh. to, to go away. Oh, St Johnston, Kenny, it's the debutant. It's Nicky Clark doing exactly what he does. Excellent play down the right hand side from Dre Wright. Ball to the back post area. Stevie May nods it back across the six yard box, and it's that poacher's instinct just to stab it beyond the goalkeeper, Carson. Excellent start for St Johnson. St Johnson 1, St Marin 0. That's a great start, isn't it, for Nicky Clark? Stuart, but defensively, can you talk to me about the two centre backs inside the six Charles, yard box? That... Charles Dunn was the one for me, Leanne. You, you might correct me, but I thought he just misjudged the flight of the ball completely. Doesn't read the danger, does he? And you always know that Nicky Clark's just going to go on your blind side and look for any scraps. It's no surprise that he does that um, but uh, what is a surprise is a back three from St Mirren they've been watertight haven't they the last the last three games or so yeah two centre back it's incredible they actually push each other out the way don't they Mickey well, Michael's getting a look at it again as well it's Charles Dunn he's the one that comes from the back post area he jumps in front of Declan Gallagher misses the ball completely and Nicky Clark's just at the back to nod it, you know, to prod it in the back of the net. I mean, Nicky Clark is exactly the sort of player that Calm Davidson has oh, been chance. crying out yeah, for. Yeah, it looks like a great bit of business. Even it? just that, yes. Michael, the fact that Stevie May wins ahead header, yeah. puts it back across, and oh, you've got other bodies there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is it going to be given? Well, a referee's taken a long look. He's going to speak to the linesman. It was a clean breakthrough. It was Robinson who beat the offside trap. It was onside for me. It looked, uh, I think, the, the, the Dundee... Uh, <laughs> Or the Queen's Park fans thought he was offside. Take a long time about this decision. The referee still didn't debate with Dundee. I think it is a penalty kick he's going to give to the home side. He's eventually sorted it all out, and Dundee will have a penalty kick. Chance. Sorry, Kenny. Chance for yep. Park. Dundee United's first relay of the afternoon. Free kick on the left hand side from Dylan Levitt. Stephen Fletcher wins the header. Down to Liam Kelly's right hand side. Good save. Charlie McGrew, uh, Charlie McGrew quickest to react. Puts it back across the face of goal and Paul McGinn has to put it behind. Dundee United starting to flex their muscles. I tell you what, Kenny, Air United, I think they're lucky uh, to still have a man on the part. It's the referee, and we're back top of the referees, David McGeeke, it was Kitongo. Uh, he's through, and the ridge contact, he goes to ground, but the referee, they didn't even book him, gave this nothing. Pit, sorry, Derek, the penalty no. kick's about no. to be taken here. Zach Robinson, the man who made the opportunity, will take it himself. Looks as if he's going to. Great straight run up actually with this one on his right foot eventually. Places in the corner and the home team are ahead. It's Dundee 1, Queen Spark 0, no, and it's Zach Robinson from the penalty spot. I'm just looking at Liam Kelly's uh, strip. It's like the Motherwell home strip of years gone by, the, the goalkeeper. Chance goal! And it's a goal for Livingston and it comes from a free kick. 
It's 1 0 to Livingston. Joel Nubley takes the ball in really well. Civic gives the foul away from the resultant free kick. Hole whips it in. Can't quite see who scored it, but it was a lovely touch. Takes it down and slots it home. Although Willie Collum is going over to the linesman. It's Montan- going to yeah, it's Montano. Montano. Is it Montano? It's a great, great touch and great finish. It's terrible defending. I think they're complaining about offside. Well, if he's not offside, you've got to say it's terrible defending because he's got acres of space to just control it and slide it at the back of the net under no pressure. Yeah, they've claimed for offside and they've just stood still. You know, it's the, it's the old cliche that you say, play the whistle, play on, but Hearts are expecting the call to come. It doesn't. Montano's got time to take the touch, compose himself and slot it home with the, the left foot. I, well, I mean, the only thing, and we've not seen a replay of it, the only thing you can say is that if Hearts are... Um, I think there's mm-hmm. a player round the back who's playing them on from the Hearts uh, defence. I don't know who it is. No, I just, think I'd need to get a look at that again, but I actually think... It's the striker, yes. Kingsley. Uh, not Kingsley, the... Yeah, the f- fullback, isn't Cochran. it? Co- no, no, no. I'm not sure who it is, I need to see it again. But the thing that you would understand, the frustration for Hearts would be if they've held a high line and the Olympic players ran offside, then they've, you know, they've actively tried to play the offside trap. But it looks to me as if they've actually not done it well enough. And is it, uh, yeah, I think it might be Humphreys. A long way, Michael, huh? I think it might be Humphreys who's actually at the back of the line who should be looking along it. And I think he's the one that's dropped in and played them all onside terrible defending from Humphreys having seen it once though I, again there I'm going to say that I do actually think they've got a claim because I think Montano might he started in an offside position and I think that's where the confusion comes in but we'll hopefully get a look at it again but certainly defensively Hearts have, have switched off and not played to the whistle K- Kingsley was fuming interesting Michael that you actually say it's Humphreys from a dead ball situation only with Hearts a couple of days maybe something he's just missed when it comes to the set pieces and free kicks etc but it's cost him there yeah I don't think no, he he's is on side. yeah he's, he's on side we've just seen it again he's run from deep and Humphreys around the back is playing them he's playing them all on um, Kenny you know to go back to the whole chat about Christian Ramirez it Look, it happens in football. Has he been harshly treated? Probably, but that's a manager's prerogative. I think that um, you know the manager lives and dies by the decision he makes. He's brought in a striker who's looking the business, so he can he can get away with that. So it doesn't disrupt the dressing room <laughs> when when Mioski is doing the business on the well, part. The manager seems to be making the well, correct call. Of course, what I hear, I don't think he's the type that he wants to disrupt. Although right. maybe his tweets are, are telling well, us well, another he's story. On, he's on heavy money as well, yeah, though, and, yeah, and, the, and every window that goes but by. He's, he's, he's only got a year in the contract. Co- well, his, his cost will go down if they don't sell him in the window. But that's well, what I'm saying, that the, 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 the perfect answer was to move him on. Yes. I'm surprised that he wasn't moved on. And he still might be, as you said, there might be areas in the world that he can still move to. For, but that, 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 that's the answer to me. To me, it looks like the manager's trying to frustrate him and annoy him to get him out the door because he is on good money. Um, and he doesn't even want him at the club. He's brought somebody else in. So from the player's perspective, of course he feels he's harshly treated because as Willie was saying to you, he banged in goals last year and he was isolated and he didn't have great service. So he's thinking to himself, what have I done wrong? He's so, not done a great deal wrong, but the manager doesn't fancy it, we want somebody else. So Kenny, done, Kenny can yeah. still go to Mexico, Belgium, Turkey, Russia, Australia, Greece, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Portugal, Ukraine, Israel and the UAE. Can, can, he, go to, can he go to Russia? Yeah. Do you not miss well, one their biscuits? I didn't say Russia. You did. You oh, did, did I've got it in front of me. Well, you said that. Well, I might have said it. Hold on, I'll just go through it all again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got options. He's, he's got, got options. Got options. Got the players got chance. to want to go. Yeah, chance. Oh, big chance in Fir Park. Mother were really putting on their pressures. Paul McGinn. He comes in from the right hand oh. side of the box. He goes to shoot with his right foot, chops on to his left. Eventually, it's cleared off the line. And just as I'm saying that, Kenny, there's been a penalty awarded to Motherwell. The Dundee United players look a little bit perplexed. I've no idea what it's for. Maybe Leanne and Michael can help us out, but it's a penalty for the home side. They really have been cranking up the pressure. Yeah, there's nothing on the screen yet, Crags, but certainly... Suggestion of handball, I'm being told. Motherwell do enjoy a, a Kevin Van Veen penalty, I would need yeah. to say. It's become quite a, a common theme to kick off the season. Just waiting for the replay here. Yes, the ball's going in now. It's when it comes back out round the other side. They had the initial strike from McGinn that got cleared off the line. I think it was at um, Edwards or... I can't mind. I don't know who it was. Well, Craig Napier was pointing his arm, so there must but have been some sort of handball involved in that. But Kevin Van Veen just put the ball on the spot. Got a hat trick during the week. He's got seven goals so far this season. Looking for number eight, of course. 
He only has to look to the stand and see Louis Malt, the new signing, sitting, <laughs> waiting to see what's going on. Van Veen, full of confidence, up he steps. Oh, it's saved to the keeper's right hand side. Eriksson went to the right. Kevin Van Veen, the fans around me can't believe it. It's a wonderful save by Eriksson, and it's still nil nil. That's a brilliant save from Eriksson, isn't it, Craggs? Because he's outstretched. It's a really well hit penalty. If it nestles in the back of the net, we're going to speak about how good it is. But when you're the goalkeeper and you guess the right way and you commit as much as Eriksson did, it's a brilliant save. It's just, it's a, just at that height. You know, if he, if he's got uh, the direction and the pace, but it's on the deck I don't think the keeper saves it it's just at the height though that yeah. allows the goalkeeper to be able to pull off that save right running through the scores earlier on we brought you a sensational performance from Celtic 4-0 the Thump Rangers at Celtic Park it's Hibs 1 Kilmarnock 0 Livingston 1 Hearts 0 Motherwell 0 Dundee United 0 Ross County 0 Aberdeen 0 and St Johnson 1 St Mirren 0 what a start for Nicky Clark there into the championship Chick brought his news of that penalty for Dundee they're 1-0 up at home to Queen's Park all the other games oh. remain goalless a broad part of Thistle Cove Rangers Hamilton Ackies Morton against Ayr and Wraith Rovers against Inverness into League 1 uh, Airdrie down to 10 men and a goal behind at home to FC Edinburgh Alba goal up away to Clyde Kelly Hearts 2 Falkirk nil, Peter Head nil, Montrose nil, Queen of the South nil, Dunfermline oh, that's one. Brilliant. Yep. Sorry, Kit, it's a goal for Air United. I tell you what, it's Akin Yemi. I think that's his seventh goal of the season. But uh, strange for a striker, there's a little bit of pressure on. And it, I was just watching him, and he just starts to drift away from goals to the edge of the box. and the ball just finds him, he shapes the shoot, cuts on his left and then just hits it hard and low down to the keeper's left hand side. So uh, that was the first time, first, last five minutes, a little bit of pressure and they've got their awards here, United take the lead. Yeah, what a start to the season for Air United, top of the championship, what a start to this game for Stenhouse Muir, 3-0 up to, against Stranraer in League 2, all the other guys should tell a lie, Elgin City 1-0 up against Bonnie Groves, all the other games are goalless and in four for East Fife, Dumbarton and Stirling Albion against Albion Rovers and into the English Premier League goalless uh, finished in the Merseyside Derby at lunchtime Brentford have gone 1-0 up at home to Leeds United and Nottingham Forest they have signed so many players uh, in the summer they're 1-0 up at home to Bournemouth so let's then get to Rory Loy oh, uh, a chance yeah on you go Al as a ball played across the goals, it's, a, it's Campbell that plays it across, or is it Cadden? Whips it across, and in comes Henderson at the back post. He's under a bit of pressure, but six yards out, knocks it over the bar. Hibs have been relentless for Hibs. It's waves of attack. Kilmarnock are defending their box well. Occasionally, they've had one decent breakaway. All the shot was through, pulled his shot wide of the target. Hibs should go on to score more here today. Oh, it's a brilliant chance, Alan. Yeah. Great play from Hibs, as you say. Forward passes, forward runs, bodies looking to get beyond. Henderson just catches it too heavily and, and lifts it high and wide. Any sign, Rory of Hearts getting back into things here at Ammonvale? Yeah, well, Stephen Kingsley had a free kick. He, you know, dead ball expert and a good position there, but he's hit it over the bar. Hearts slightly shook for five minutes after the goal. Um, Pittman picked up good space in behind Devlin and Halliday just a minute ago and played in Montano, but he blasted it into the side net. And Livingston much more prominent in the game now. Good breakaway by Hearts there. They're liking that diagonal across the pitch. Uh, Devlin didn't deal with it. They ended up winning a free kick. Holt got booked for the tackle, but Kingsley hit it just over. It remains 1 0 to Livingston. How are the Dons looking, Willie? There? in Dingwall I, I, I didn't think I would hear myself saying this but I wish the game would actually slow down chance. a little bit <laughs> oh my god what a chance that is yep. unbelievable chance I think it's Penrice breaks the lines he goes down the, the down the wing he plays it across the face of goal I think it's Concalves sliding in he tries to place it in the corner when all he needs to do is stroke it home and he hits it wide it should be 2-0 Livingston oh what a let off that is Unbelievable. He puts it in a plate for him, doesn't he? Because he could have actually gone himself. He squares it across. I don't Great know vision. what. I don't know what he's thinking. He's got so much time. He probably could have taken a touch and then slotted it home. So, Willie, really, you're hoping things slow down a wee bit up there in Dingwall? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and we see a little bit of culture brought to the game. Listen, there's plenty of effort. You, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of running about. Some very ferocious tackling. Yeah, the ball, the ball's going from end to end. Aberdeen's had the better of possession, but it's just too, it's all just too frantic uh, for me. You, you know, the, the, the Ross County defenders are doing extremely well, trying to get in front of anything that's played up to the strikers' feet. 
Um, but it needs a bit of quality, I think, brought oh, to the game. Again. Plenty of effort, no quality. Another effort for Hibbs. Martin Boyle this time, one on one. The left back, he hits it, the keeper manages to knock it away, and then it's cleared. But there's an injury on the far side. Martin well, Boyle's pace is causing havoc here. Well, I can just see that whole 99 thing with Ramirez. Was that his idea or the club's idea? Because it seems to me to to rub, you know, but attract attention to the whole scenario and a jersey number. I mean, you said 99, the writing's on the wall. It could only mean one of two things. The writing's on the wall or you're having an ice cream of a, a chocolate bar in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can't answer the, the, the question because I don't know, but my instincts would tell me that that's a managerial oh. decision. In fact, I, I think, you, you know, you're pretty close to saying it was a manager that decided that. I don't think a player would give up the number nine, a striker. You, you know, uh, uh, you know, worth his shot would never give up the number nine. No, and why no. would they? Why would they want to do that? No, I, I'm not you know, talking about the manager. I, I take that point, taking the nine, nine away from him. It could be go also, to the first available number. Yeah, but or, or it could be Miofsky has that, and you know, you have players that have ridiculous things in contracts now, and numbers can be one of those. So if he signed on the basis that he wears number nine jersey, it's a conversation you need to have with your current number nine. Do you care that you wear number nine or not? See, some if it's Ronaldo, players, Leanne, you some, give it to Ronaldo, you uh, didn't give it to Miofsky or uh, you didn't give it to Ramirez. Leanne, Leanne, I think as long as that heavy money that Biscuits was talking about, I think that's more important than the number. Absolutely. But, but see, yeah. see, if, see if you don't want the number then and you're the guy that's scoring goals, ask the manager if you can change the number. You know, I don't think... <laughs> I, 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 yeah, but I don't think... You, you know, he didn't want the number nine. I don't no, think I'm not that saying he necessarily that needs the number nine. No, but, but somebody's made the decision and... I wouldn't have thought it would have been uh, Ramirez that would ask the manager to take the number nine off him, surely. Now, no, on the other hand, Mayovsky might have it in his contract that he gets a number nine, and that's a managerial decision. But yeah. should he go to, like, that's 23 or something? Really. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, I understand they take the nine away, but why go to 99 when it just a bit Because that's modern-day football, check. That's, uh, well, see, that's why I don't understand. Honestly, man. crazy. OK, pick a number then, check. Hey, come on, let's go. <laughs> we, can all have, we can all have a go at this, yeah? What I number would I you don't... like him to have? I, I, I don't even think at it matters what... At least it's got nine in it. I don't, even, I don't think it matters what number he moves to. The fact that he's got number nine taken off him yeah, is it, going to attract yeah, the attention. Well, the help, he needs, the help he needs it should be 999. These things are good for him. <laughs> The Hearts need some help there at Almond Vale. They're struggling, Rory Loy. They are. The Livingston have since the goal have really grown into it. Joel Noodley is just peeling onto Civic and he's taking the ball in so so well. And Pittman makes those forward runs, um, breaking the lines, and Hearts are struggling to pick him up. Um, and they've really got to grips with Hearts shape and how they're looking to play now. Um, and it's making for a really good game. This actually, I'm enjoying it. Um, Hearts are struggling though in the last five ten minutes after dominating the first spell of the game. So it'll be interesting to see how it plans out. Chances at both ends with that Kingsley free kick as well, but it remains one 0 to Livingston. St Mirren fighting their way back into things here, Madame Park Stewart. They're trying hard, Kenny. They're trying hard. Just a corner coming into the box here, defended by Stevie May. But I'll tell you the thing that's really caught my eye is, is what Nicky Clark has done for those round about him. Uh, Stevie May's got a new lease of life here in the first what 42 minutes of this game. He's been bright, he's buzzing about the place. And a new role for Dame Carey playing in the middle of the park, spraying passes all over the place. So uh, I would say that St Johnson deserve their lead, but as always, St, St Mirren are fighting hard to try and get back in this one. Piling on a wee bit of pressure just now, but still 1 0. Motherwell passed up a great opportunity, missing that penalty. Well, the penalty was saved. Kevin Van Veen's penalty saved. Stephen Craig, and who's on top at the moment? To be fair, it's still Motherwell, Kenny. You know, United have little spells now and again, and I'm not too sure if it's the shape of Dundee United that's actually hurting them. They've gone with a 3 5 2, but because Motherwell's two wide players, Joe Efford and Blair Spitt, they're playing so high, they're pinning back Liam Smith and Bech, which means that Paul McGinn and Matt Penny have got a free run down the flank so they're getting overloaded in wide areas but I think if Dundee United can get to half time at 0-0 Liam Fox will be the happier manager because they haven't played well they've been under the cosh you know they've had that penalty missed or saved should we say by Ericsson so he may make some changes but still 0-0 big chance here for Ross County though uh, down the uh, left hand side and uh, Jordan White I think he's just made the run too early he's got himself beyond oh. the near post if he'd have just timed it a little bit better then I think it's a tap in but he's beyond the near post is, you know, is driven across uh, the face of the goal from uh, Purrington and he's just put it by the post. But a good chance, good opportunity if the striker had timed his run properly. Hibbs against Kilmarnock. How are things looking there? Kelly really under the cosh. They Alan. are. They are. They've got a penalty. Christine goes down in the box under the challenge. There's no chance that is a penalty kick. They're very sporadic. 
chances in the Hibernian half, Kenny, so far. Hibs have dominated the game. They're spreading the ball through one side of the pitch to the other, making it really, really big. The pitch, Boyle's pace is causing all sorts of concern, but to be fair to Derek, he's kept two up and there's a chance again. Cadden's through, keeper comes out and saves it. This is for Hibs to throw away, really. Kilmarnock, they did have a midweek game and they do look knackered. They're going to have to play 80 minutes with 10 men. They look, some of them look shattered already. Oh, yeah, chance. Yeah, a chance. It was uh, it was um, Richardson. It was down. It, you know, he plays oh. so far up the park, and he's he's, he's 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 driven in. He's managed to get it onto his right foot, coming in from the right hand side. And I think that just makes him tug it by the post. Good drive, uh, you know, good run as well, but slides it by the far post. Craig, what a goal that would have been. Oh, honestly, what about the pass from Ross Tierney? Top he just draw. slid it down the side. Took three Dundee United. Around. Uh, players out of play in this right hand side. Kevin Van Veen just got beyond Ross Graham. Great first touch and he smashed it off the crossbar. How Dundee United are still level in this game, I've no idea. And how Kevin Van Veen hasn't scored in this day, I've no idea either. What a lovely pocket of space Tierney takes up though, doesn't he? On the half turn just oh in between the lines. Goodness me, what a goal! That is quite phenomenal. Matt Robinson, 30 yards out, left foot. It's screaming into the net from the moment he hits it. What a goal, Dundee! Two now ahead, and I defy you to name a better goal than that. Oh, no, no, oh, don't, 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 do don't do it. Don't do it. No, no, this is not Zidane. Zidane. This is. <laughs> There's a chance for him. Henderson's clean through. Keep it beat. Brilliant tackle. Thank goodness, Alan. You saved this air and saved your old pal check. No, Can this is Tony Yaboa. <laughs> Who is it? Tony Yaboa. Right. We'll, we'll watch that later on after the disappointment of that Zidane goal for Morton uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, Hamilton Aki are 1-0 up uh, way to Cove Rangers also in the championship Chick telling us here 2-0 now for Dundee Air the table toppers 1-0 up way to Morton Kenny Cropper is at Gayfield it's a broth oh, against something's Cardiff happened. Thistle something's yep. happened here yep. I, I, I didn't see it but uh, the, the ball went out of play the referee is over there's a Ross County player went down he's claiming that he's been assaulted perhaps by the goalkeeper you might be able to get a replay on it, but I can't comment on it. I'm not too sure. We're just seeing exactly the scrum ash just now, Willie. Really. Yeah. We're just seeing the players around the, <laughs> the referee, certainly looking to try and calm things down, get a wee bit of clarity. Was well, it off the ball then? It, it must it have was been. Off is the it the ball? Totally off the ball. Yeah. Because um, the ball's out on the right hand side, and that's happening in the middle of the goals. And the referee is trying to get some assistance from his assistant to uh, clarify what exactly happened. Um, but the Ross County players are, are claiming there was some kind of a, a contact with one of their players in the box and uh, the referee is trying to <coughs> sort it all out and is I it, hope you get a replay that can maybe Miofsky sort it out. Is it that it's been spoken to? Yeah, Miofsky speaking to, 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 to Kevin Clancy, the referee yeah. so just still waiting for a, for yeah. a replay yeah. on this yeah. one. Half time at Easter Road Hibs 1, come on it now. Half time, at, half time at Dens Park at Zach Robinson 2 Good spark nil. Half you. time at Livingston as well, and it's Livingston one, Hearts nil. Half time at McDermott Parks at Johnston one, St Mirren nil. Right, still we wait. Uh, is, 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 is this played on, hasn't he, Liam? Yeah, it looked as if it was just a push. There was a bit of a, a coming together. Um, maybe it was Miofsky that, that was involved, but it certainly didn't look too much, really, Nothing. I would need yeah. to say. Uh, we might get a better angle slightly closer up, but. Yeah, no I action's think it's... been taken anyway. The referees obviously decided that. It was a fuss about nothing. Or he had no idea what happened. That was the half time there, sorry. Yeah, sorry, at Firth Park. My mother will nil somehow. Uh, Don't need it now. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Yeah, we'll, actually, we'll get Stephen's thoughts in, in the second half of Open All Mics, just in the job that Stephen Hamill is doing there. I've enjoyed listening to him speak. His side have played very, very well. Most notably that game at, at Aberdeen, they were ahead and still they pushed and pushed uh, for more goals there. So just waiting, just. Willie's game to go by the looks of it there, Willie. Yeah, yeah, but just uh, getting towards the... Uh, I don't know, I don't, don't think he's put it up yet, the, the, the board. Um, he's got it in his hand, he's away to put up. One minute we've, we've got to play. Uh, so we're just waiting and that's a chance for Rodge County though. Oh, flags up, flags up, forget that. One minute to play before half-time here. Ha half-time, Kenny, Morton, no, Air United, one. 
Thank you. We'll go round the grounds uh, at half time and uh, later in the programme, we'll look back on that dramatic old firm derby as well. We'll get the guys' thoughts on who they think uh, should be the next permanent manager of Dundee United. With a win for Liam Fox, do it for him uh, this afternoon. We shall see a few people have distanced themselves from the position. We'll run through the full score lines for you. Just waiting on that game in Dingwall to come to a close. Willow was saying it was fast and furious early on, a real lack of quality in that match. We're just waiting for that one to draw to a close as the ball goes into the, the area there, Willie. But as you say, I'll just watch the balls up in the air it's, an awful yeah. lot, isn't it? It, it is, and uh, you know, the, the tactics at Ross County are, are applying as a half-time whistle, whistle goes, it's nil nil is that they're getting so close to the Aberdeen players and they're putting challenges in and there's not really much room for uh, Aberdeen to build anything up and everything's just fast and furious. It's got to improve in the second half. Yeah, it's been fast and furious, Kenny Cropper. We tried to get you earlier on there at Gayfield, still playing a broth against Party Thistle. Uh, slow and relaxed as opposed to fast and furious <laughs> at Gayfield, but uh, Partick Thistle have had the better of the half chances. They've at least tested Derek Gaston a couple of times. The half-time whistle has just gone, and it's Partick Thistle nil-nil away at Arbroath. Chance, chance, chance! And it's a goal! Oh, what a goal! Oh! All the action from all the biggest games. Oh, it's the second goal! Oh! This is Open All Mics from Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. Music is like a great painting, you know, it doesn't reveal itself all at once. Join me, Nicola Meehan, and guests as they choose the music that soundtracks their lives. We started off talking about Rembrandt, and somehow in the conversation we ended up talking about Nile Rod. <laughs> For the record, continues with one of our greatest living painters, Alison Watts. It's such a wonderful song because it's a portrait. Grandma's hand. Alison talks about her influences and reflects on her life and career. My dad's studio. There was an upright <laughs> piano in there, but I had to practice with a clothes peg on because he was always doing some taxidermy in the background. <laughs> For the record from BBC Radio Scotland, listen now on the BBC Sounds up. So the halftime score lines in the Premiership. Hibs 1, Kilmarnock 0. Kilmarnock down to 10 men. Ash Taylor sent off there on 10 minutes. Livingston 1, Hearts 0. Motherwell 0. Dundee United 0. Kevin Van Veen had a penalty saved there for the home side. Ross County 0. Aberdeen 0. And St Johnson 1, St Mirren 0. What a debut for Nicky Clark there for the home Saints at McDermott Park. Into the Championship. A broth 0. Partick Thistle nil, Cove Rangers nil, Hamilton Ackies one, Dundee two, Queen's Park nil, Morton nil, Table Toppers Air United one, and Wraith Rovers nil, Inverness Cali Thistle nil. Into League One, Ten Man Airdrie nil, FC Edinburgh two, Clyde one, Alloa one, Kelty Hearts two, Falkirk nil, Peterhead nil, Montrose one, Montrose are down to ten men, and Queen of the South nil, Dunfermline 2 into League 2, Annan 1, Forfar 1, East 5 0, Dumbarton 1, Elgin City 1, Bonnie Regros 0, Stennis Muir 3, Stranraer 0, and Stirling Albion 0, Albion Rovers 0. And in England, uh, the full time score at lunchtime Everton 0, Liverpool 0, Brentford 2, Leeds United 1, Chelsea 0, West Ham 0. Newcastle United nil, Crystal Palace nil, Nottingham Forest two, Bournemouth nil, Spurs one, Fulham nil, and Wolves one, Southampton nil. So let's then uh, get round the grounds and get some half-time reports. Let's first of all get to Alan Preston at Easter Road. Al Hibbs against Kilmarnock. Half-time score, Kenny Hibbs one Kilmarnock now, and it's been all Hibbs in this opening period. Johan had a shot in five minutes, well saved, but Kilmarnock were reduced to ten men in ten minutes. Ball over the top, it's a race between Boyle and Ash Taylor, there's only one winner, Boyle, Taylor slides in, takes the player down, right on the edge of the box, the referee produces a red card. From the result in free kick, Newell hits it into the wall, comes back to him and as it does, he, he, he scores with the, the second effort with the rebound, put the ball into the back of the net, then 23 minutes, cut into the byline, cut it back to Campbell, he knocked it over, Campbell's causing all sorts of concern on the right hand side, again to the byline and Henderson shot over. Kilmarnock have had one effort, all the shot, clean through, bit wide of the target and pulls his shot 
into the, into the ground. The half-time score at Easter Road to Bernie 1, Kilmarnock 0. Yeah, I feel a tough afternoon for Derek McInnes' side through there in the capital after such success in the League Cup midweek. Let's then get to Livingston against Hearts there for us is Rory Loy. Yes, indeed, Kenny. And the first half, Hearts had the better of the uh, opening exchanges on the 11th minute. Kingsley's uh, cross across the face of goal was low it found its way all the way to Mackay he played in George Grant who swivelled but his shot went high and wide in the 28th minute was the opener and the changing point in the game Livingston scored directly from a free kick Holt free kick straight into the box Montano in acres of space takes a touch and slots it in the corner for 1-0 Livingston 34th minute as well Pittman found loads of space behind Andy Halliday and Devlin he played in Montano but his shot this time blasted straight into the side netting Kingsley free kick on 35 minutes was disappointing very very good at those but it went wide and on the 38th minute how it wasn't 2-0 Livingston I'll never know Penrice broke through the lines played a ball across the face of goal Concalves was there all he had to do was put it in the net whether it was the presence of Craig Gordon that put him off or not I'm not quite sure but he hit it wide Livingston the better team in the second half of the first half interesting second half to come it's Livingston 1 Hearts 0 2 for part Motherwell against Dundee United and there for us is Stephen Cregan Indeed, Kenny, and it's Motherwell nil, Dundee United nil somehow here at Fir Park. I've got to say, it's been the Kevin Van Veen show in this first half. He had a header early on, he got himself across Charlie McGrew in the middle of the goal, just flicked it onto the top of the net. Uh, Paul McGinn also had a shot cleared off the line by Liam Smith, but the big moment came just after the half-hour mark when Motherwell were awarded a penalty. Kevin Van Veen has had three penalties this season, scored all three, but he stepped up this time. It was a wonderful save down to the right-hand side by the goalkeeper Eriksson. Moments later, he almost scored a great goal again. It was a wonderful slide rule pass by Ross Tierney that played him in down the right-hand side. Somehow managed to hit the crossbar rather than the back of the net. For Dundee United, Stephen Fletcher came close midway through the first half. He had a header from about 16 yards out that was saved down to the right-hand side by Liam Kelly. And I think it tells you all we need to know that the Motherwell fans stood up at half-time and applauded their team off the pitch. Such was their dominance in that first half. For Stevie Hamill, he'll want more of the same in the second half. He'll also want the breakthrough. For Liam Fox, he needs a little bit more from his players. It's Motherwell nil, Dundee United nil. Yeah, what a start in management for Stevie Hamill. Let's then get to Dingwall Ross County against Aberdeen. The half-time report comes from Willie Miller. Yeah, Kenny, it's 0-0 here uh, at half-time and it's been a frantic uh, first 45 minutes. Yeah, it's been full of energy, full of determination, some uh, good tackling, uh, some very tight marking from the home side. It looks as though Malky Mackay set his uh, side out to make sure that they get very close to the opposition and don't give them any opportunity to build up. Uh, Aberdeen have had the better of possession, the better of the chances. There hasn't been many chances created in the, in the game. Johnny Hayes had a long range shot at the angle from something like 30 yards uh, that was well saved by Laidlaw and Gold, touching it round the post. Basawans looked really lively up top, uh, assisting them as well. And Richardson uh, coming in from the right-hand side with the right foot, drove one past the far post. And as for the home side, only the one opportunity for them. Purrington down the left-hand side did really well evading the challenge and uh, then drilled the ball across the face of the goal. But unfortunately for me, Jordan White had moved too early into the near post, couldn't really get his feet adjusted and just made contact with it but put it past that near post. So at half time it's 0-0, I think it needs to calm down a little bit in the second half. I'm sure that Jim Goodwin will be hoping that his players get uh, a little bit more room to pass the ball. As for uh, Malky Mackay, I think he'll be uh, happy with the effort that his team's putting in. Yeah, seeing the pictures coming into the studio, a real lack of quality in that game, as Willie has been telling us. So to McDermott, Parts and Johnson against St Mirren, and there for us is Stuart Kettlewell. Yeah, thanks, Kenny. Uh, it's a game of very few chances, in all honesty. Uh, St Johnson have been pretty impressive with their methodical build-up play. Uh, St Mirren are looking to find a way back into the game. We've had one or two half chances, the first of those fell in about 20 minutes to Curtis Main. Uh, his play, sorry, down the left-hand side, found a cross into Jonah Ayunga. He swivelled in the shot but put it past the post. In 22 minutes, we had a, an opportunity for St Johnson this time, their first sighter at goal. Again, good play down the right-hand side from Dre Wright. Found a delivery into the front post. Stevie May got just across the front of the defender but could only scoop it over the top of the bar. Uh, the best part of play for St Johnston undoubtedly came with a goal in 26 minutes. Again down the right-hand side. Three right, swung in a lovely cross into the back post area. Stevie May peeled off into that area and was able to nod it down into the six-yard box. 
two centre backs of St Mirren misjudged it but Nicky Clark with those predatory instincts just peeled off the shoulder and was able to prod it home for 1-0 other than that Kenny very few chances nothing much in the way of goal mouth action but I'm sure Callum Davidson will be happy about the approach from his team and the control that they've had at times in possession but I fully expect St Mirren to come back at them in this one in the second half as it stands it's St Johnston 1 St Mirren 0 into the championship then let's hear from Kenny Crawford Kenny you've been watching our broth against Partick Thistle Half-time score, our broth nil, Partick Thistle nil. Every season, Dick Campbell says his main aim for our broth is to avoid relegation. Last season, they outdid expectations massively and finished second. This time round, things have been a bit more challenging with no wins from their opening five league games. And today, they're without key players, Thomas O'Brien, Nicky Lowe and Michael McKenna. Partick Thistle, with that in mind, would you expect? Would you, you would have expected, uh, with three games winning on the bounce, uh, they've had the better of the half chances through Kevin Holt, Stephen Lawless and... And Harry Milne, but no breakthrough so far, 0-0 no, no at half-time. To Dens Park, uh, Chick Young's there, and Chick, you've witnessed another wonder goal this afternoon. Well, Kenny, you gave me some stick about my description of Jai Gatonga's goal for Morton two or three weeks back. <laughs> I think you'll be humbly apologising when you see this magnificent strike uh, by, uh, by Zach uh, Robinson this afternoon. What a goal. He'd already put Dundee ahead from the penalty spot. That was just after 27 minutes. Big Easy was booked for that. Big Stephen Easy was booked for that one. Uh, uh, and that put Dundee ahead. But my goodness, just a few moments before half time. He's got the ball 30 yards out. And I'm saying to myself, don't shoot from there. But he rattled it and it flew beyond Callum Ferry into the corner. No chance for the goalkeeper. A standing ovation for the fantastic strike from Zach Robinson. And you think at this stage that uh, Dundee are looking safe for all three points. We remember I did say at the top of the programme that if Kinspark can win this, a couple of results go their way. They could have gone top. Uh, from this distance, though, it looks like Dundee, Star Rolls, Jack Robert, Zach Robinson are indeed rattling towards all three points today. Yeah, you've got back up, Chick. Uh, Hugh McDonald, one of your colleagues, a journalist on social media, saying one of the best strikes that he has seen. Let's then get to Morton against Air United and the half down report from Derek Ferguson. Yeah, Ken, it's Morton now. Air United won. The home side, they started really well in this game. Dominating play, really unlucky not to take the lead in 13 minutes. Crawford finding himself in a good position in the box but shot was well saved by Albuson in goals, top of the table early, they gradually started to get a foothold in the game and went close in 22 minutes, a corner fizzing one just over from 20 yards but Air did get the all important opening goal and that came in 34 minutes it was Deepu Akadiemi uh, creating a lovely little bit of space for himself in a crowded box and uh, he fired home, left foot from 16 yards out, Morton's response was a beard header that was cleared off the line just before the break, so here in the driving seat here at Capelo, Morton now Air United won. Yeah, what a start to the season for Air United, top of the championship with a very busy opening 45 on open all mics, let's hope for more of the same in the second half Chance, chance, chance and it's a goal, oh, what a goal the action from all the biggest games. Oh, it's the second goal! goal! This is Open All Mics from Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. Right, let's kick off then with Stephen Cragen at uh, Fair Park. We see you're underway there, Stephen. We'll, we'll get back to Stephen in just one second. A uh, problem with the line there, but he was talking to the Kevin Van Veen show. I mean, the penalty save and a fantastic strike. Uh, and he's been on fire the past few weeks. Yeah, superb first half performance from Motherwell. And certainly they would have gone in scratching their heads as to, you know, how they've not managed to take the lead. Certainly the, the penalty save from Ericsson up against Kevin Van Veen was a, a huge point in the game. Um, but Motherwell just looked like a different animal today, middle to front, really aggressive, forward play, forward runs, wide players as uh, Stephen had alluded to during commentary, uh, or certainly through the updates that they were causing a lot of problems for Dundee United. So it'll be interesting to see how United respond to that, uh, but Motherwell will be more than content, just the goal that's missing. How different, Stephen, do they look under Stephen Hamill compared to Graham Alexander? Ken, I have to say, it's absolutely night and day. I mean, I yeah. was here for the Sligo game and I watched the second Sligo game away from home. And if you'd have told me at that period of time that four or five weeks later, they'd be playing with the freedom, they'd be dominating the ball, they'd have wide players entertaining, they'd have creativity, they'd be a plotter off at half-time in a game when they're drawing nil-nil, uh, having missed a penalty. I wouldn't have believed any of it because they were so far removed from that back then. 
and I just think the appointment of Stephen Hamill has galvanised everyone, it's brought the supporters together, there's more unity. I think Motherwell fans always like to associate with the manager, maybe something, uh, somebody who's played there in the past or bringing young players through. And I don't think Graham Alexander done any of that or ticked any of those boxes. And unfortunately, when you're not winning games and you're not playing well, then the fans get in your back. Yeah, well, you saw them firsthand up at Batordi. You were raving at the performance that day, especially where they, they kicked on and looked yeah. for more goals when they went ahead in the second half. Yeah, what impressed me was the style of play. Um, they worked really hard uh, defensively. They closed Aberdeen down. They dominated uh, Aberdeen. Didn't give them any opportunity for build-up play. But, you know, the impressive part of their game was when they got the ball they actually passed it and I haven't seen that for a while uh, when I've been speaking about Motherwell and they passed it really effectively and efficiently and you know get three very well worked goals and could have had, could have had a few more as well so it was a top notch uh, performance uh, and I'm not surprised to hear Stephen you, you know telling us that he's getting much more of the same this afternoon Michael, have you got experience of that in a dressing room where there's a change of manager and the players almost get a new lease of life to get some sort of release because the style of play changes for them? Um, <clears throat> not anything personal, but you see it all the time um, from yeah, clubs where that uh, you know something. I mean, look, fundamentally, yeah, I am a firm believer that everybody, every football player wants to play football by getting it down and passing it. Yeah. They want to do that, uh -huh. like even guys that are maybe not the most comfortable on the ball if you get them into a system and the, they're comfortable in that that they know where the passes are their teammates are all working together that's more enjoyable to play that way than to play a style of football which is agricultural so um, it's great to see you know working for Stevie Hamill at, at Motherwell and you know everything that uh, you can see in the, the side that wasn't really um, on show previously is that's the, way, that's the way players want to play. You, when you grow up playing football, you, you don't grow up wanting to thump the ball at the park and run around and charge and tackle. That's all part of the game, yes, but fundamentally you want to get the ball and you want to pass it and you want to play attractive football. Yeah. So it's good to see young managers that are trying that and being relatively successful. I think that's a key point, isn't it, Rory? That it, this expansive football, it can pay off. You can take the chance in doing that. And the punters, of course, they're going to love to see that. We've seen big attendances the past few weeks at Fir Park. Yes, indeed. And I was there on Tuesday covering the game against Inverness and they were, they were absolutely excellent. Um, so good on the counter-attack when uh, Inverness had the ball and so good in possession. And you could see the patterns of play they'd worked on. As Michael quite rightly says, as a player, you enjoy playing on the front foot. You want to go and attack teams. And that showed on Tuesday. Kevin Van Bean was unplayable at times and also as, as Stephen touched on there as well you had McKinstry coming on at 19 you had uh, Lennon Miller coming on at 16 so uh, you know ticking a lot of boxes Stephen Hamill as the guys have touched on but very impressive on Tuesday um, and he's making a real difference What's happening at Easter Road Alan is it a case of, of damage limitation for Derek McInnes? No not at all you know Derek's having a go and they've actually won themselves a corner in the start of the second half Hibs need to get the second goal if they put this Kilmarnock team to bed for me, but while it's 1-0, Derek will still believe they can get a chance and get something out of this game. Well, what do you make of Hibs, Alan? Michael oh, was saying earlier, he doesn't really see an identity to the side yet. Um, I, th I think, I've got to agree with Michael, yeah, but I think getting Boyle in, it gives them something, it really does, and, and Johan, they've gone for real pace up front today, with Boyle and Johan very, very quick, letting Dodge go, bringing in uh, McCurdy as well from Swindon who looks very tricky on the ball it's going to take a bit of time and I said that at the start of the season Hibs fans have got to be patient they really have until Lee Johnson Jamie McAllister as it is today put their stamp on this team Right, Livingston against Hearts Rory, uh, oh. I mean Hearts were poor in that first half, any improvement at the start of the second? Yeah, I mean, they were poor on the back end of the, the first half, they started fine um, the second half's been a little bit scrappy, they did have a free kick out in the the wider area which they put into the box which was cleared pretty easily Livingston responded with one of their own but um, it's they're coming forward again here through Kingsley it's deflected keeper takes it um, yeah they're going to need to book up their ideas a little bit if to get something from this game and kind of what I was discussing earlier does Robbie Nielsen put more emphasis in this game or does he put more emphasis on the game on Thursday it's a difficult one for him it's due to him it's due to a lot of his players um, but they're going to need to, to, to try and turn this one around if they're to get in and out of the game how do you weigh that up as a manager then, Leanne? A huge European game coming up for them. You know, we know the squad is stretched at the moment, a lot of injuries. It's a tough one for them, isn't it? It is, but I, I, personally, over my career in, in the games when, when I've played, uh, whether we played domestic games weekend, Champions League midweek, or whether it was an international, 
I always found the focus was always just on that one game. I don't ever think you get too far ahead of yourself because you're only ever as good as your last game. And I think form in football can speak you know, an awful lot. I think momentum um, is a huge thing as well. And whether you win games or lose games, that can quite quickly become a habit. So I think you've only ever got to focus on the game in hand um, and use that and use your squad to the best of your abilities. I think as the game goes on, if you manage to get a foothold in the game and you start to take care of it, you maybe can get a, you know, an advantage in it. Then you would start to look at the game ahead. You maybe take off a few bodies and start to rest and recover a few a bit earlier. Um, like Celtic were afforded to do today in the second half. But I think, you know, for Robbie Nielsen, his focus surely has got to have just been on this game today. Yeah, agreed. And I think there's an Red example. card at Gayfield, Kenny. Yeah, Kenny. It's Scott Allen who's had his second yellow card and referee Duncan Williams has ordered him off. It was a really bad challenge on uh, Ross Doherty, the Partick Thistle captain, slid in and took him out long after the ball had left his possession. So, Arbroath down to 10 men against Partick Thistle, still 0-0. Kenny, can I just ask you a quick one on the, the Arbroath situation as well with Jason Thompson departing this week as well? I found that a strange yeah. one. He just asked to be released from his contract. He's went and joined... Kelty, but for me, he's a player that's played over, you know, in the Championship for a number of seasons and played a number of appearances for Abroth as well. Yeah, he's been there about four years, I think, before he went to Kelty, and James Cragen has left as well. He's gone to Edinburgh and he's actually scored in his debut, I noticed as well when I was checking the scores at half time. Um, five of the starting 11 for Abroth. Um, today weren't even at the club uh, last season. I'm just wondering whether that's part of the mm -hmm. reason they're struggling a bit. Yes, yep. Thomas O'Brien's out today. Michael McKenna, I think, is going to be out, injured about a month. He, he he played on Tuesday night, but has had something in training in the last couple of days. It's ruled him out. Um, and Nicky Lowe is agitating, I think, for a move as well. I think he was hopeful of a move um, before the, the deadline shut, but he's not even in the squad today. So there's a few players that were part of the success last season who either have left the club already or are out injured or are just not featuring. And I think it's maybe just kind of um, ruptured things that are both a little bit as they try and get a bit of momentum because they've only taken um, two points from the opening five games in the championship. They've only scored three goals in their opening five games and they're rooted to the bottom at the moment. They have looked OK today, but I think they'll struggle now that they're down to 10 men. Yeah, Scott Allen sent off there for the home side. Will, you were going to come in, I think, on the, on the, the Hearts debate about which games to prioritise? I, I, I was going to put an example of Stephen Glass last season when he made, I think it was seven changes against Wraith Rovers in the Cup and they went out the, the, the Cup uh, competition, which is really important to Aberdeen. Eventually, they went out the Scottish Cup as well and cost him his job. And he was focusing on the European tie that uh, was his next game rather than focusing on, you know, a good cup run. So I think that's an example if you... You, you know, if, if you think about it too much and you change your team too much, then you leave yourself open uh, to going out a cup competition, and that's so important for clubs uh, because that's really the only chance Aberdeen have got of lifting their trophy. They're not going to lift the title, so it's one of the cups that they've got to concentrate on. And although Europe's important, I think a cup run is vitally important as well. The one thing I used to find really frustrating, Willie, and I don't know if you've experienced that as well, is when you would make a number of changes in a squad where it was clear that the manager was looking to freshen things up and rest a few players. The game plan then doesn't go the way you expect it to go, and you're then forced to bring off the bench the players that you had hoped to rest, <laughs> which you then become, you know, you're chasing yeah. the game, and it becomes an environment that it should have been an easier game, or it certainly should have been a lot more seamless, um, and it completely backfires, which is why, in my opinion, go with your best team, get the result, get the job done, then take off players if you have that option. Just on that, Leanne, he's making a double double change as we speak. It might even be a treble change, so I'll come back to you on that. Peter Haring's one of them. I'll update you on who the other two are when I see. Right, I'll just run through the latest scores in the lower leagues. Well, actually, we'll start in the championship. Our broth nil, Partick Thistle nil, the home side down to 10 men. Cove Rangers nil, Hamilton Ackies one, Chick Telling us Dundee two, Queen's Park nil, Morton nil, Table Toppers, Air United one, Wraith Rovers nil, Inverness, Cali Thistle nil. In League One, 10 man Airdrie nil, FC Edinburgh now three. 3-0 up there, Clyde 1, Alloa 2, Kelty Hearts 2, Falkirk 0, Peter Head 0, Montrose 1, Montrose down to 10 men, Queen of the South 0, Dunfermline 2 and into League 2 we go, uh, Annan 0, Forfar 1, East Fife 0, Dumbarton 1, oh. Table Topping Dumbarton, Elgin 1, Bonnery Groves 0, Stennis Muir 3, Stranraer 1, and Stirling Albion won, Albion Rovers nil a chance there. Has a chance at Easter Road, and it's for Ryan Porteous. It's a ball into the box, really good ball, and Porteous with a header. Touched over the bar by Walker Connor to Hibs. Five Hibernian players in the box there, Alan, attacking. Just what you love to see, going numbers, go and yeah. finish the attack. Kilmarnock gave the ball away cheaply, Leanne. It's a, it's a simple pass out from, I think it was right playing it. 
out from the back, he's given it away. Ken, it's been a feisty few minutes here for Park. There was a, a free kick awarded to Dundee United down to the right hand side from where you sit in the main stand. Um, Stevie Hamill got booked, he didn't think it was a free kick. Callum Slattery got booked. Stephen Fletcher's given away three fouls in a minute and hasn't been booked, so it's a little bit feisty, it's nice and fiery, exactly what you want in the game, but it's almost affected the quality, it's been a bit scrappy and too scrappy, and Mother will want to try and get the ball back down and play again, but still nil-nil. Alan, what's your reading of the situation in terms of the, the, the job at Dundee United following the departure of Jack Ross? Liam Fox in charge again today, they lost, uh, sorry, the one midweek after the heavy defeat to Celtic. Do you think he's in pole position, you know, Martin Dowden telling us earlier Michael O'Neill's not interested, Craig Levine's not interested, um, we we're hoping to hear from Tony Ashka, we're not going to hear from him now on the programme. What's your reading of the situation there, Alan? I think that, you know, I always say this, uh, the interim manager is, is in pole position because if he gets results, and results dictate, but I think Liam's very inexperienced at this level, so I, I can't really see him getting it. I'd love to see Mark, one of my old teammates, Duncan Ferguson, get it. I really would. I, I think he deserves it. He's worked with you know, some of the top managers, none more so than Ancelotti, and who wanted to take him to Real Madrid with him. And Duncan decided to stay ever. And so I'd love it if Duncan got it, but I don't think he will. I, I'm trying to think who, is it, who else would be out. It's a, it's a very good, attractive job. Alan, will cost come into it? Because you would think I think it has pay, to, Stephen. Yeah. I think it has to. Which would make me think that if that was the case, then Liam Fox could end up getting it similar to what Sam Courts did because I don't mean if money was no object but if there are a few quid to go and bring a manager in Michael O'Neill may have tempted clearly doesn't want it Duncan Ferguson bigger names but if cost is an issue they may have to go in-house I don't think cost as in wages for Duncan will be a problem I really don't I think that Duncan would want the job I think Leah, Tam Coates got it Stephen because he's been in the academy and knew the academy players and Dundee United's financial position Wages, wages to turnover. They had to play a lot of young boys, so given to Tam Coates, who worked in the academy for years and knew the capabilities of the young boys, is different from giving it to Liam Fox. But has that changed? Has that wages to earnings changed? Is it? Because if it hasn't, then surely they well, might have to the, the, I think they're saying the next set of accounts will show, you know, far healthier figures, Stephen. I think, you know, Mark Ogren's on record, uh, sorry, oh, Tony Ashgar's on record as saying that. Chance somewhere? Check, was it? Check. Oh, it's it an incredible double save. Queen's Park trying to get themselves back into it. Harrison Sharp blocks a shot, comes back out, Simon Murray has it, uh, and he saves it again. Wonderful goalkeeping. Have to see Queen's Park have raised their game since uh, since half time. Remember, they are trailing by two goals to nil, but uh, that what a save twice from Harrison Sharp. It's still 2 0 to Dundee. Staying in the Championship, Cove have equalised against Hamilton Ackies. Alan, how big a consideration for a new manager will it be that they have? You know, three three managers left the club. Jack Ross was sacked by the club. Is that a concern for someone looking at that job? It is, but if you're out of job, Kenny, with no employment, it's, it's a very attractive job. There'll be a lot of people wanting that job at Dundee United. You know, it's a really good club, got a good training base at St Andrews. They've got some decent players as well. It's early on in the season. It's not as if they're marooned away at the bottom with you know four or five games left to keep them up. You've virtually got the whole season still to go. Um, so it's a very attractive job for whoever gets it, but I think they need to make an appointment and quick. I really do. I, I think they should get someone in to work with the players and see where they go from there. It, oh. it's, the interesting thing, Kenny, is that um, you know there's two sides to this in regards to concerns about the overall shape and setup of the, the club. Yeah, I think they exist, but as um, as Alan speaks about there, um, if you're out of a job, you're looking at Dungeon United. You look at that squad and the opportunity to propel the team up the table and get oh, yourself as a manager. In, Mayofsky's in at the angle, cuts it back for Aberdeen. Oh, chance wasted. I think he should just take it on. That's what his left foot. He maybe feels as though it's too tight, the angle for the strike. But for me, I think he's, he hits it. The goalkeeper saves it. Aberdeen have got white jerseys flooding into the box. That's a big chance wasted for me. I'll yeah, just update you on those subs, Kenny, yeah. just because it's been such a hot topic, the Hart squad. So, uh, on's come Haring, Shanklid and Forrest. Off's went Grant, Mackay, Stephen and Devlin. And for Livingston, a double change. Penrice and Kukalvis off. De Hambula on with Guthrie. Yeah, really quiet start to the second half. We'll go around the grounds in a few minutes' time. But, Willie, j just looking again at, at that statement, we discussed it. It came out during the programme midweek from Mark Algren. Uh, no thanks to Jack Ross for the oh. services in the statement. And that really interesting line we spoke about, Willie, where they said we took a, a period of reflection and information gathering after Sunday's game before coming to a decision. That was a, a really interesting part of that statement. Well, it, it, it was interesting 
you know, to the point that it kind of uh, makes people think that who is he talking to? Is it the players that he's talking to? Where is where is he gaining this information from? And I think you know you've got to look at the manager situation when you relieve the manager of a job as well and try to protect him as well. I think the club have got a responsibility to protect, protect themselves, but also their ex-employee, and I just think it leaves a bad taste. I, I, I don't know why they had to say it. I, you know, I don't know why it got by the, uh, the, 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 the press people, the, the people that would look at that and maybe advise the board on it, and I just think it was a little bit petty because it just puts thoughts in your mind, you know, and try to uh, think about who could they possibly be there. Is it the fans he's talked to? <laughs> you know, who is it that they're actually gaining this information from? And invariably, you then go back to you know, perhaps the rumours that within the dressing room all wasn't well. And is it the players that they're actually talking about? And did the players then, you, you know, have a, a big part in relieving Jack Ross of his uh, position? Yeah, it was an interesting statement, Stuart Kettua, wasn't it? You know, we, we spoke about it the other night when that came out uh, during the midweek cup ties. And, you know, no thanks there to Jack Ross. There were lots of stories of fallouts with the players. A couple of players have been left out. Big players in the game against Celtic came back in midweek. What, what, what do you make of the whole situation at the club? Kenny, I was at both games. I was at Celtic on Sunday and then I was at uh, Livingston on Wednesday and the, the difference in application, yes, but we'll all take for granted they're playing against a different level of opposition but they played the same shape, they made a couple of changes. I noted at one point uh, in the second game against Livingston I think it was about 70 minutes and Stephen Fletcher ran about 50 yards to catch uh, Christian Montano who's quick by the way on the front foot and he goes back in to make a challenge. I never seen any of that on the Sunday. It was almost giving up the ghost. It was almost accepting your fate. So it leads me to think that there's that there has been something that's happened. We don't want to start rumours, but it leads me to think that I never seen the same application against Celtic on the Sunday that I seen on the Wednesday. And the players have to take a, a share of responsibility in that. And I always say as well, it's not your job to decide who the manager is. You're an employee of the football club. If the manager sets you up and sends you out there, it's so important that you go and do the best of your ability. And I didn't see some of the players giving their best on the Sunday. And the flip side of that, I seen them giving absolutely everything on the Wednesday. So I find it quite intriguing how you can change in the space of three days with your application of the game. We know about technique and quality, that can all change. Uh, but your, your fundamental is your application, your work ethic. And for me, it was day and night uh, between Sunday and Wednesday. I saw them applying them themselves against Aze Daltmar at, Tan at Tanadai. But what happened from that but, point? But that, that, this is the incredible thing, that the it's events take over as far as I'm concerned, because, you know, you look at that performance, you look at the squad they put together, and it is all looking rosy yeah. for Dungeon United. Then, the capitulation in Alkmaar. The first half an hour was all right. It wasn't too bad. They were 2-0 down, and there was a couple of moments where you think, oh, they couldn't have done much you know, more other than a couple of wee bits here and there. Then there's a panic, there's a ball played across the face from Liam Smith that led to the corner, that led to Birigiti chucking it in the back of the net for the third goal. And from that point on, the season has just fallen apart. And because of those, it's to me, it's snowballed and it looks like nobody's been able to make, control the make. situation, which has then affected the level of application from the players because when you are drowning, you're sinking, you're suffocating, you don't feel like you've got any way out of it. The change but, has happened, which has led to them feeling like they could do something well, different. Well, I can understand this, why you don't turn to your senior players. We saw the pictures, yeah. Jack Ross on Sunday, you see, Ch you see Mulgrew there, you see Tony Watt sitting there, and you think, why on earth, in a big game like that, are these guys with so much experience Kenny, not involved? I don't think it's going to make any difference. No, at that Kenny, point. you should have seen Charlie Mulgrew on Wednesday organising the defence in the last 15 minutes yes. when uh, Livingston applied a bit of pressure. And I, and I found myself thinking, why was he not doing that when it went three or four against Celtic? You know, because he's played in big games, he's been through big situations that he can handle. But this is what I alluded to the other week and the way that I think Dundee United have played. And, Goal, and St Johnston! Yeah. Excellent play, Kenny, down the left-hand side from Adam Montgomery. He does superbly well. So it shows composure to pull it back and it's the opposite wing back, Dre Wright steps in and what a finish, side footed, right foot, right into the top of the co uh, top corner of the goal, St Johnston 2, St Mirren 0. That's a brilliant goal, great team goal it is Stuart and I'll tell you what, the difference over the course of the last five games that I've watched St Johnston today, it's apparent 
They're getting more bodies forward, more players in the box, more opportunities to score. I think early on, either the first or the second game of the season, I spoke about touches in the opposition box by the time it came to the end of the game, and they had very, very few. It's been a different story today. Bodies forward, bodies in the box, players looking hungry to get on the end of it. Leanne, Stevie Leanne, they're giving really themselves well. a chance. They're they giving are, themselves a exactly chance by yeah. passing the ball. You know, it's not going quickest route to goal. They're actually trying to build the play a little bit, which allows you to get bodies into advanced areas. But they've done well. Also, what you mentioned earlier on, there looks like there's more of a freedom to go and play forward. That's the intent now, you know, whereas defensively they were maybe a bit, you know, set up at times where they were they were compact, they were too deep, but it was really hard to get players forward. Whereas today it looks different, middle to front, there's Absolutely. more energy, there's more legs, yep. and there's much more desire. And, and certainly Clark played his part in that, but Stevie May looks to have played his part in two of the goals as well today, which is, is credit to him. They've got a cutting edge now. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, and it's still got a different side, don't they, today? Well, but a cutting edge brings that, because yeah. it takes a lot of pressure off the rest of the team. Because when you, I mean, St Johnston last year in particular, and Leanne's right, even at the start of this season, if you're playing on a side like that, that you feel like we're never going to score, that gives a horrible amount of pressure on the rest of the team because it's like one mistake, you lose a goal and you're like, that's a game gone. Whereas now, confidence grows in the rest of the team. They, they, can, they can build off the back of thinking, we can score here now. And it's not just Nicky Clark, it's the additions of like Jamie Murphy, Dre Wright in the wider area, because I think Dre Wright when he was at St Johnson before was an effective player as well. So, all of a sudden they've started to build and by the way it's not as if they've all of a sudden become world beaters here but they are a competent side now who know they can compete in the top flight right let's get round the grounds uh, so we just heard from uh, Stuart Kettle there uh, St Johnson cruising 2-0 up at home to St Mirren let's then get to Easter Road Alan Preston how will Kilmarnock faring in the oh. second half on you go Willie on you go Willie oh yeah no Richardson he gets himself into a great position down the right hand side and you know, there's no one near him and the cross is just pathetic uh, he hangs his head in shame and rightly so and I can tell you this game hasn't improved one bit in the second half that kind of back at Easter Road and Kamalika made a game of it and they're still very much in it defending really well for a couple of chances Ole Shaw had an effort just over and then Armstrong cross touched away by Marshall for a corner but then it was Hibbs Porteous had a header touched over and then a cadden cross for new signing McCurdy he should have done better headed it over <laughs> Kyle Lafferty has come on for Kilmarnock where it's still 1-0 <laughs> Easter Road what a miss unbelievable chance for Dundee it's a game ahead tennis, tennis in the middle eventually gets across the goalkeeper gets the biggest of touch puts on the head of Zach Rudden who must score except he heads it in the side there he should be 3-0 still 2-0 Ke Ke Kenny they, they, you ought to see this Doogie Emery and Lee Bullen are, are doing their absolute not in here it was there was an incident Air United on the break uh, I think it was who was it it was uh, yeah, it was Robbie Crawford, I think it was down uh, injured. He should have let the, the play run on. Uh, Hawks the play and then he gets a throw and you know the two players are standing, he just threw it to the to the bottom player just to even it up a little bit. <laughs> it's quite honestly quite incredible. There's another incident and the, the two managers are absolutely good. There's a chance for Hibbs Boyle through again. Uh, he's been held up. His pace has been incredible. Chance for Hibbs gone back to nil. No, chance is gone. Air United, good value oh. for oh, oh. oh, another scramble in the box and it's in the net. This time it is Zach Ruddy with the goal. A real comedy of errors at the back for Queen's Park. They're all over the place. There's about four attempts in goal. Eventually Ruddy puts it in. 3-0 Dundee against Queen's. Absolutely cruising there. Uh, let's get back there. Derek will come back to you in just a minute or two's time but Stephen Craig let's get to Fair Park Motherwell against Dundee United we're chatting a lot about the vacancy there at uh, Dundee United Stephen how have they how have they looked under Liam Fox this afternoon well uh, they've been okay you know I think you know it's fair to say Motherwell have been the better side they have looked the most likely for getting goals Stephen Fletcher has been the only real threat this afternoon Tony Watt has gone off 10 minutes ago and Glenn Middleton's came on but you know there was a 10 or 15 minute spell in the game where it was scrappy it had no real flow to it that probably suited uh, Dundee United, but Motherwell have got back hold of the ball again. Van Veen, as always, has been influential. Him and Ross Tierney. Tierney's just playing in behind him as a 10, and you know the link-up play, the kind of telepathic nature of how they're getting on is looking good and looking clever, but 
you know, we're 72 minutes into this game and Motherwell haven't got the breakthrough. I think Stephen Hamill is going to go to the bench. Rolando Ahrens, I'd imagine, would come on and possibly Stuart McKinsey, just for a little bit more creativity because on the basis of play, they deserve to be ahead, but they aren't. But it's nil-nil so far. So the, the score lines as they stand, Hibbs 1, Kilmarnock 0, Livingston 1, Hearts 0, Motherwell 0, Dundee United 0, Ross County 0, Aberdeen 0, St Johnston 2, St Mirren 0. Into the Championship, a broth 0, Partick Thistle 0, a broth down to 10 men, Scott Allen showing a red card there. Cove Rangers 1, Hamilton Ackies 2, Dundee 3, Queen's Park 0, Morton 0, Air United 1 and Wraith Rovers 0, Inverness, Cali Thistle 1 into League 1. FC Edinburgh now 5-0 up away to 10-man Airdrie. Clyde 1, Alloa 3, Kelty Hearts 2, Falkirk 0, Peterhead 0, 10-man Montrose 1 and Queen of the South 0. Dunfermline 2 and into League 2 and in 2 for 1 East Fife 0 Dumbarton 1 Elgin City 1 Bonnie Regros 0 Stenhouse Muir 3 Stranraer 1 Stirling Albion 1 Albion Rovers 1 and in the English Premier League Brentford 3 Leeds United 1 Chelsea 0 West Ham 1 Newcastle United 0 Crystal Palace 0 Nottingham Forest 2 Bournemouth 2 Spurs 1 Fulham 0 and Wolves 1 Southampton to nil. So let's get to Amon Vale, Rory Loy. How are things looking there? Yeah, a couple of players down. Oh, problem. With, and the line's down as well. There were Rory Loy. So just <laughs> I to think give I'm you... back, Kenny. Oh, I think back. my mind just disconnected there for some reason. There's a couple of players down, a bit of a head knock. Um, in terms of the game itself, it's actually Livingston subs that have made a difference, not so much Hearts. Dylan B uh, Bahambula <laughs> looks a right good find, um, come up from Oldham. So some lovely touches on the ball, very skillful. A couple of caps at France under tw 20s level as well, is no mean feat. So he looks a really good player, as does Curtis Guthrie's made a difference as well. As for Hearts, their substitutes haven't had mu as much of an impact on the game since coming on. It still hangs in the balance here oh. though. Livingston won, Hearts still. A chance for Hibbs, it's boiled to Johan and he's shot. He's got to go across the goal, he goes narrow side into the side netting. I remember a couple of weeks ago, just at this point, we got a real flurry of goals. Let's hope for that in the remaining, what, 15, 20 minutes or so of these games. It's been quite a quiet uh, second half. Not a great game for you there in Dingo, Willie no. Miller. What, what needs to change? What, what can Jim Goodwin do to affect this game? Well, he has made uh, substitution. He's got Duke on up front, so two up front and try to have some more firepower up there but they're, they're just they haven't had much opportunity to play the game to pass the ball and I, I think Ross County's tactics been uh, impressive in terms of closing Aberdeen down and restricting them uh, to opportunities but when you put that kind of a tactic into your own side then you know, I think it restricts you going forward, and if it's Chance, nothing oh, at all... Oh, great save, Craig Gordon, and it's the substitute, Curtis Guthrie, combining with the other substitute, Dylan Bambula. He's got Dylan on the back of his shirt, so I assume that's how he wants to be addressed. Comes across the face, and Curtis back heels it. Craig Gordon, fully stretched, <laughs> tips, it, <laughs> tips it to safety. What a save that is, by the way, because he, he's got no idea it's coming, and it's at point-blank range, obviously. He does really well to get out from under his feet. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't expect anything else to be fair though from Craig Gordon, would I you? Don't know if it went that far back, Leanne, but the skill from uh, Dylan Bambula was outrageously good. Again, he's he's been so good since he's gone. As has Joel Nubley, the full game, by the way. He's a top top player. Right, let's let's find out the mind of a footballer here then. Christian Ramirez, what are you hoping for for Aberdeen this afternoon? They get beat. <laughs> Do you all agree with that? Hundred percent, Kenny. Yeah. Because the only way they're going to get him back in the team is if they if they keep winning. He's not going to get a game. Ah, well, you know, Kenny was saying, uh, Willie, what would you be doing now? I mean, would you not try and chuck him on? Ramirez, have him he, in? He, he's, he's not about. No, I know he's not. That's uh, my you point, mean, though. Would you, you mean not, in, in the squad? Him? Yeah. Well, I would. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, the only problem is with these texts flying about or these uh, WhatsApp messages or whatever social media site he was on, I think it makes it difficult for the manager and the manager's got to yes. oh, go. make sure his authority's kept. Yeah. Yeah. Alan? Ah, power and Boyle having a go at each other. Have a look at Leanne. Boyle pushes power in the chest. He goes down I think he's won a penalty kick. The referee gives a foul to Kermanek. Power's already been booked. He doesn't do anything. It's Boyle that's the aggressor here, really. Yeah, yellow Struggling. card for Boyle anyway. We'll get a look at it. Just going to get a replay just now. Yeah, Boyle's holding off. Yeah, he's looking for it. Boyle, he's just managed to get his body across. He's looking for the free kick, whether he's hoping it's a free kick or a penalty. Certainly no foul, though. He's initiated the contact for me. 
Alan, what I was looking at and I was saying to Michael there as well, see when you look at the Hibs results. Oh, there's Lafferty having a go with Cadden on the far side. Sorry, Leanne. Off the ball, this isn't. I can't see the referee seeing it. Goal! Cadden's... It's a second goal for Air United. And it's Akin Yemi. He's the provider wow. there for his striking partner, Mackenzie, up top. Just picks the ball up, left hand side, Akin Yemi, and just fires it across. And there's Mackenzie just going across that front post there. Side foot into the back net. You'd think that would build three points. What no, Air United two. That yeah, was that wasn't that wasn't a booking for me. No. Like Martin Boyle. No. Much oh. to do but nothing. The push off the ball. No. It's not a booking for me. I don't think you can lift your hands though. There's plenty of folks shoved him back. Yeah, possibly, I think... but I think it's just the aggression that he uses. Many and the fact and sends off did you get? He's gone down looking for the I've foul, got, then it's not a foul. Got an awful lot rescinded, Kenny. <laughs> anyway, my point, Alan, is what I was going to mention is that when you look at the games, Hibs St Johnston, Hibs Rangers, Hibs Kilmarnock, the amount of time they've played with an extra player yeah. in these games. Yeah. to get results, they get the late uh, winner against St Johnston they went on and get the late equaliser against Rangers and today they've played for almost the entire game with an additional player and they're still yet to convince me and this is no nothing to do with Hibs but I think in their games uh, the teams have all had players set off unjustly yeah, yeah, yeah St Mirren showing any sign of a comeback there McGinn the part, Stuart yeah, Kenny, just as you were talking, uh, a couple of big chances for them to get back in the game in the same phase of play, to be honest. Cross from the right-hand side, Jay Henderson, and it was Eamon Brophy who's come onto the park. A header comes off the crossbar, it came back down to Ayunga, and his side-footed effort came off the left-hand post as well. So they're trying to get back in. That's the best opportunities I've had, undoubtedly, in the game so far. Um, but St Johnson, with that aside, Kenny, have looked relatively comfortable and look as if they're going to go on and get the three points. I've got, I've got to say yeah. with this Kilmarnock one, though, I, would, I don't think you could say that Ash Taylor was undeserving. I think oh, that was here, have right a look call. at this one, Porteous and Lafferty. Lafferty's way down holding his face. He's saying Porteous is hit him with his left hand as he runs by him. He's rolling about the ground. Lafferty's now back up, but certainly got hit in the face by the looks of it. Right, Leanne's out of the a close up view here. on the far side for me. Yeah, Leanne's just on a close look here. Lafferty's been yellow carded, as has Porteous. It's like the two pantomime villains, is it? Coming yeah. together at one. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> and they've met their match with each other, to yeah. be fair, because they, they both noise their opponents up incredibly well. At times it works in their favour. Lafferty, yeah, it's a back press. No, there's nothing in it. Portis does put his arm up. It's just to hold him off. I think he catches him probably just below the chin, just in the chest more than anything. Michael, would you disagree? <laughs> Is there dis anything in it? I would disagree with the referee. I mean, what's the point in booking the two of them? Like, so just back to Lafferty. Was it Charlie Mulgrew in the, yeah. the old firm game? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it wasn't. No, uh, I think the Aberdeen. Game. Aberdeen. I think uh, Aberdeen. Charlie Aberdeen. Aberdeen. Aberdeen, Aberdeen at the time. I. But what, like, John Beaton there, I just think, like, have a word with them. You know, why book the two of them? You know, it goes back to the Martin Boyle thing as well. He gets up and he gets shoved, he's shoving somebody up. Like, just have a word. But he's but I Michael, he just, just, he just had a word. Though. Kenny, he What's just that? had a word with Kyle Lafferty with the incident with Cadden about two minutes before this. But can you not book Kyle Lafferty for trying to get potentially a player sent off? No, but he did. There was a bit of contact, but there was nothing, you know, there wasn't any, like Liam was saying, there's a bit of contact, there's no malice in it. So you can understand Kyle Lafferty, okay, exaggerates it a wee bit, but nah, not, not to the extent where it's a yellow card. He's not, no. hit, he's not hit him in the face though, and he's rolling about like he has been hit in the face. He's caught him just below the, the chin, probably on the more his chest. But the two of them are at it, Mike. Oh. You're right, he probably could just defuse the situation. You just get booked for so many things nowadays. It's just like... Oh, you know, another good save by Craig <laughs> Gordon. Oh. Comes from directly from a throw-in. Pittman picks it up, turns, smacks it. Gordon tips it over the bar. Oh, a chance at Fir Park. Stuart McKinstry did come on along with Rolando Ahrens. And Stuart McKinstry went down the left-hand side, up against Liam Smith. He gave him a little dip of the shoulder to the right. Went to the byline, fired it across goal. And somehow, I think it's Charlie McGrew or... Ryan Edwards have deflected it over the crossbar. Mother will once again go on close. Rory, what have you made of Hearts this afternoon, the overall performance? It's not been great. They started well, 20, 25 minutes. When I say they started well, they didn't create too many good opportunities. There was one for George Grant, but other than that, they, they, they've, not, they've not really performed, I must say, and that comes down to Livingston. Livingston have been very, very good. Um, set up really well, solid. 
just struggled to break them down. Hearts, lack of imagination in the final third, um, which will be slightly concerning. The substitutes haven't made much of a difference as well. You know, we've, we've discussed that plenty about how he uses his squad and things, but they've, they've struggled. Um, hasten to, to, to use the term, they look leggy, but <laughs> they certainly have been the, they certainly haven't been be, uh, as good as Livingston. He's done One, some job, David Martindale. Yeah. Again, unbelievable. Yes. He seems to unearth these gems time and time again. I think he's done it again with a couple here, uh, Alan because a couple of substitutes look really good and Stephen Kelly's just about to come on for his debut as well signed permanently from Rangers what, what, what did you make of that signing Rory? I think it's a good one I, I think you know, for the lad to go down to Salford and have been uh, alone in the, the, the Premier League and, and things as well he's played a lot of games for his age and I, I think that David Martindale could put him into the side absolutely no problem at all and trust him to do a good job um, and then go and let the forward players like Nuble and uh, the other guys play I, I think it's a really astute signing and Steffi Omionga makes way for him just now um, got a just goal here yeah, I'm Derek. not sure who it's Morton that's got the goal I think it's Muirhead he gets his head on it but it takes a, a few ricochets before it just creeps over the line so uh, I thought this game was done and dusted Kenny but not Morton back in it the chance that uh, George Grant had in the first half I remember showing it and I was going to mention it at the time and I forgot that uh, it actually comes off his other foot his standing foot rather than wrapping his right foot round it it nudges off his standing foot Hence why he never got the strike on target and it went way past the post. Michael, can you have a look at this one? This has happened a few times now. Now he's waved offside here. Stephen Kelly's first touch was to take a free kick. This is how they scored and they've had a couple of others. And that looks tight again. I don't know what going on with Hearts' line there, but I don't know if you can see if that was on or off. It looked tight. It's a good nah, save. the angle that we've got is not great, to be honest, but it's a great delivery, to be fair. And it is marginal at best. Guthrie as it gets on the end of it. Oh, he's got to do better. What a chance for Johan. Really yeah, good play on the left-hand side by Newell. He's about 10 yards out, he cuts it back to Johan, middle of the goal, on his right foot, opens his body up, knocks it wide. Oh, honest, oh, Kevin Van Veen! Oh, I, I was going to say thought he'd scored it hard, he's on his hands and knees. It's a wonderful oh, passage wow. to play by Motherwell down the right-hand side. I think yeah. it's uh, Bear Spittle goes beyond the back three, he pulls it back to the edge of the box, Stuart McKinstry has the shot from the edge of the box, Van Veen takes a touch, turns, the goalkeeper's gone, Ericsson, he's out of play, he has a shot, what looks like into the empty net, and somehow, Charlie McGrew, I think, has clears it off the line, incredibly still 0-0. Yeah, what just a defensive to, block, brilliant. Yeah, just to confirm the goal scorer, it was, uh, it was Robbie, Robbie Muirhead. Thanks, Derry, things get a bit feisty there in McDermott Park, Stuart. A little bit, a little bit, Kenny, yeah, as you can understand, St Mim are trying to battle their way back in, we just had a bit of a stramash in the box, I think it was Ayunga that lunges for it and he caught uh, Remy Matthews, the goalkeeper, but to be fair, the goalkeeper's reaction was great, he bounced straight back up, I think more the issue was the likes of Declan Gallagher got involved with two or three of the centre-backs from St Johnston, but not a great deal in it, to be honest, St Mim just trying to find a way back into this. Kenny right. Inverness are 1-0 oh. up. Yeah, yeah, Wraith, I Rovers, got Wraith Rovers have not beaten them in 90 minutes in the last 28 games going all the way back to the year 2000. Do you sometimes just get teams like that, Alan? You, yeah. you just say yeah, you, you can't do. you can't get the better off. Sometimes you certainly do, yeah. But Kilmarnock have got the, the hoodoo over hearts at Tynecastle. I think it's uh, an 18 games of 112 drawn three. That's yeah. fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, That's a great record. At a ground like that. Let's get into the championship. Kenny Crawford and Gayfield, uh, 10 man are both against part of Thistle, Kenny. Yeah, it's just wave after wave of attack for Thistle now, Kenny. It's just a case of trying to break down this resistance uh, that our both are putting up. They have had the ball in the back of the net, Partick Thistle, but it was clearly offside, and, and it was obvious it was going to be offside before Anton Dowd put it oh, into it's the a back penalty. of the net. Anton... Yep, penalty. Yes, yeah, St Johnston, Kenny. Great counter-attack, kick from the goalkeeper, left McLennan 1v1, and he's rampaging forward, chops inside Marcus Fraser. It looks a definite penalty to me. You guys will get a replay of it. Marcus Fraser slid in and just caught the forward as he was about to unleash the shot on his left foot. Yeah, it's really naive from Marcus Fraser, Stuart, because he, you know, the, the chop's lovely from McLennan coming back inside, and it's his momentum. He just commits. You know, I think he, he thinks he's going to pull the the trigger, and he tries to block the shot. Yeah, he takes him off his feet. Great Penalty kick from the goalkeeper. It excellent. was excellent. Ederson, Ederson like, wasn't it, at Man City? That flat ball flight where he just puts him through in goals. Terrific. Brilliant. And, and you love to see that, you know, in a comfortable position. St Johnston at this stage of the game, they could just be managing it, looking to see the game out. But they're chasing that third goal. It's Graham Carey that's about to step up, Kenny. 
this could be some this could be some performance from St John's and some result for them this afternoon. Oh what a penalty top corner goalkeeper's left right into the top corner no surprise with the one day left foot he has St Johnston three St Mirren nil you do if many of us saw this one uh, coming this afternoon, Liam. What oh, are you wow. considering the, 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 the run of results that St Mirren have been on? No, absolutely not. Um, but I think, you know, Michael spoke about Nicky Clark earlier on and, and what he's given uh, Callum Davidson. You know, it's, it's another attacking threat. But the other players today in the system, the personnel, St Johnston just look absolutely at it. Uh, and they've put that marker down now. They need to go and produce that week in, week out. And if they do that, they certainly look as if they, they could be OK this season. Dundee have a problem here. Zach Rudden, who was a second-half substitute, came on and indeed scored the Dundee third goal, has had to go off. The sub's been subbed. It's an injury. Finlay Robertson takes his place. And it looks seriously concerned about Rudden. He was lying prostrate for quite a while. He's up and about, but he's uh, he's been subbed. So scores in the championship are both nil. Part of this nil. Scott Allen sent off for the home side. Cove Rangers have just equalised against Hamilton Ackies 2-2. They are Dundee 3, Queen's Park nil. Morton 1, Air United 2, Wraith Rovers nil. Inverness, Cali Thistle 1 in League 1. Annan 2, Forfar 1, East Fife nil. Dumbarton 1, Elgin City 2, Bonnie Rig Rose nil. Senes Muir 3, 10 Manstrom Ra 1, Stirling Albion 1, Albion Rovers 1 and in League uh, where are we down south? Uh, Everton nil, Liverpool nil at the lunchtime kickoff. Brentford four, now Leeds United two. Chelsea have equalised against West Ham one one. Newcastle United nil, Crystal Palace nil. Uh, Nottingham Forest two, Bournemouth two. Spurs now two nil up at home to Fulham and Wolves one, Leeds United nil. Airdrie have gone six nil down at home to Airdrie. They're in a red card as well, the home side. But they haven't had a good start to the season. Clyde two, Alloa three, the home side fighting back there. Kelty Hearts two, Falkirk nil. Peter Head nil, ten man Montrose two. And Queen of the South nil, Dunfermline two. And into our top flight, Celtic thumping Rangers four nil in the lunchtime kickoff. Hibs one, Kilmarnock nil. Livingston one, Hearts nil. Motherwell nil, Dundee United nil, oh, Ross County nil, Aberdeen nil, you stick it away Kenny. Oh, it's Anton Dowd, he was brought on as a substitute, he was here at our broth for much of last season, scored a good few goals, it was a brilliant shot from the outside of the box by captain Ross Doherty, thumped the base of the post and Anton Dowd was there in the six yard box just to side put it into an empty net. Our broth nil, Partick Thistle one. What chance will the Miller a winning goal in Dingwall? Well, we can all live in hope, Kenny. Um, <laughs> the, the actual game itself has not produced enough chances to give me optimism that that's going to happen, but you just never know in football. It's a strange old game, as they used to say. Um, and I'm still hopeful, but uh, no, nah, the second half has not improved at all. Listen, Aberdeen have had you know, more of the ball, they've had more pressure, more corners, free kicks, etc., more play in the opposition half. But it's just lacking in any kind of real quality, a lot of effort and enthusiasm. I'm just hoping that in the dying moments of this game that we get a little bit of quality of shot from Matty Kennedy coming in from the left-hand side on his right foot, hits it low, laid low down to his right-hand side, turns it round the corner. As I said, Aberdeen, plenty of pressure, plenty of corners, uh, plenty of ball in and around the box, but just lacking, you know, lacking that real quality in it. The game from both sides has lacked quality. No goals for you, Stephen Craig, but a far better game there. Honestly, Ken, it's been one of the best nil-nils we've watched for a long time. You know, Motherwell are still pushing and probing and they're committing men forward. Kevin Van Veen at times has looked a real frustrated figure because he's had one of those afternoons where he's not done an awful lot wrong, but he hasn't, you know, delivered at the big moments when they've arrived. And even with what, uh, we're almost at 90 minutes, Motherwell are still pushing men forward. Stevie Hamill's made positive substitutions and Dundee United just trying to get to the final whistle, but nil-nil. What chance uh, Hearts getting back into things to Livingston, Rory Loy? Well, they're putting a bit of pressure on now. Ewan Henderson's come on, young lad. He's made a difference. He's been good since he's come on. Good bit of interchange there uh, with Shankland. What I will say is that Living uh, Hearts are trying to apply consistent pressure, but one thing Livingston are good at with the height and strength they've got in their team is they get breathing space up the top of the end of the pitch so often. Joel Nubley takes it in so well, so it's hard for Hearts to sustain attacks. Um, but they are trying their best, but... The, 1-0 still about right, I would say, but Hearts are trying their best to push forward. Come on, it's still hanging in there, Easter Road, Alan, after doing a goal and a man down very early on. They are, we've got one minute to go, Kenny, here, and Hibs are making another change. Johan's coming off. 
I mean, Hibs have they've made hard work of this. You know, they've got that goal in 11 minutes. Kamara down to 10 men. Kamara have played well. Their shape's been really good. They've hit Hibs on the, on the counter attack. They've had a couple of chances. Hibs, for all the pressure that they've had, have not really had chance after chance after chance, what you'd expect. But it still looks like they're going to take all three points. A very different looking St Johnson side this afternoon. Stuart Kettwell really doing the business there. They are, Kenny, and just about it strikes me, even in the latter stages of this game, we're just about done here. Um, is, is there changes that St Johnson have been able to make? Callum Davidson spoke about that a lot last year, didn't he? About players that were missing through injury and maybe not having options, but they've been able to bring on Theo Bear, they've been able to bring on uh, Phillips, they've been able to bring on McLennan, and they've gave them a wee bit of energy as well. So things looking much better for him in terms of the squad and the options that he's got to, to use, but there's been a definite change in the way they've played for me today, and, and I'm sure the St Johnson fans will be really upbeat and positive from what they've seen. I was just looking there, Stuart, at some of the, the St Johnson in the previous results, and I know in the League Cup section they scored three goals or more, but I'm going back to October 2021 before the last There's time they scored three goals. Three goals. It's clean through! Goal. Keep it oh, it's oh, a goal oh. to Aberdeen! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Take it away, will it? The goal to Aberdeen, and uh, it's, it's a break on the break down the left hand side. And I think, I think it's Duke that gets it. I'm not 100% certain. It is. He's got Duke his top off. A, He's a, got a his of top off there in among the fans. Overhead, the uh, kind of a scissorish kick, and it goes into the top corner, totally out the blue, on the break. Ross County having a go at the other end, and Aberdeen hitting him with the sucker punch. What looks like taking the three points here this afternoon. Full time at Port Park, Kenny, Motherwell nil, Dundee United nil. Thanks, Stephen. Goal part at Pistol. It's a second for the Jags. Cole McKinnon on loan from Rangers. The midfielder picked up a loose ball in the box and left-footed smashed it into the top right-hand corner. It's all wrapped up for Ian McCall's men. Our both nil, Partick Thistle too. Great week for the Jags. Huge celebrations early on up in Dingwall. Yeah, you can see the fans piling onto the, the pit. Real time, Kenny. Oh, it's, it's a brilliant goal. Sorry, just a replay of that Aberdeen goal. Like Johnny Hayes, it puts the ball back oh, across and Duke, yeah. it, he takes the first touch with his left foot and it lifts off the ground. And that's why he then adjusts and goes with the oh. scissor kick as you described, Willie. I oh. actually think he might have started Kenny. the play in the middle of the yep. pitch. Full time at Dens Park, all three points for Dundee against Queen's Park. Zach Robinson with a double and Zach Rudden uh, scoring the third big win Keeper for the up. home side. Sorry, check. Keeper is up for Kilmarnock, we're into five added on minutes. Ball comes in, Marshall takes it. Keeper has got 100 yards to go to get back to his line. <laughs> <laughs> so what about Hearts then? Are they piling on the pressure, Rory? Um, yes and no. I mean, they've got a lot of ball possession around the edge of the box. They're not really looking like scoring, to be totally honest with you. There is five minutes added on here as well. We're into two or three of them now, and Livingston have got a throw in high up the pitch, so Hearts are struggling to get back into this at the moment. It still remains 1-0 to Livy. Full time at McDermott Park, St Johnson 3, St Mirren 0, Kenny. Yeah, what a performance, what a debut from Nicky Clark there. I mean, St Mirren were in a great run of form going into that game on the back of three straight wins, but they lost 3-0 away at St Johnson this afternoon. Cali Thistle have gone 2-0 up away to Wraith Rovers. Billy Mackay uh, with the second goal there for Billy Dodd. Side there on the back of a, a sore one at, the week, at midweek in the League Cup, losing heavily at Fir Park, but bouncing back in style this afternoon in the league. So just a couple of games. Uh, There's a chance. Oh, he's lost. Can he get the ball out for his feet? McCurdy it is for Hibs. Kamara still in it, still 1-0. They're piling up forward. Yeah, I, I, I can say for the Hibs fans, Alan, that they haven't buried this game long before now. And they've got a chance again. It's 3-on-2. McCurdy's through. He's going to take on Joe Wright. He's in this inside the box now. Joe Wright wins the battle again. Hibs... You know what, it'd be really... It's a, great, it's a good three points, because when you win a game in the Premier League, you're delighted. But when you're playing against ten men for 18 minutes, give Kilmarnock all the credit, they've defended well. Hibs are just they're looking as if they can't finish teams off. So real drama up in Dingwall late on for Willie Miller there. Duke with the goal, Willie. How are Ross County responding? What, what have they shown this afternoon? Well, I, I think they had oh. they committed too many players forward they, just before that Aberdeen goal, which I think will disappoint Malky Mackay, but, you know, he's obviously trying to get the win. Maybe he should have settled for the draw, and he left himself open down their right-hand side. And they were totally exposed, and Johnny Hayes showing the drive and the determination. And, and, and a decent cross into the box, but then it was a striker, Duke, that uh, produced a moment of madness. It looked as though 
it wasn't going to come. Um, it looked as though the ball was too high for Duke, but he somehow managed to adjust his body and get that overhead kick and put it into the roof of the net. Um, yeah, Ross County are, are trying desperately to get back into the game. We've got five minutes added on time here as well for them to do that, but they haven't looked like it for most of the game, and it would be a big ask for them to get something out of this game now. Aberdeen in the lead and looking to take all three points. Yeah, it's a fantastic Full time finish, at Gayfield, our both nil, Partick Thistle too. Yeah, that's a big win for Ian McCall. Sorry, they beat their both, of course, in the cup midweek, and they have followed that up with a win in the league. That goal from Duke Leanne was an absolute beauty, wasn't it? it was great technique. Yeah, Full time at Livingston, finishes Livingston one, Hearts nil, just about right over the course for me. Yeah, it was a cracker from Duke, and it's probably worthy of winning a game of football because he adjusts so well, Kenny. It's the, the ball comes in, as I said, from Hayes. And his first touch is probably not the best, but it just lifts off the ground. He's slightly off balance, but he manages to adjust and, and to be creative and, and to take it on in the manner in which he did. Brilliant finish so at the top Easter corner. Hibbs one, Kilmarnock now. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, Hibbs going ahead there early on uh, through Joe Newland. 12 minutes, that was after Ash Taylor was sent off for a foul on the edge of the box. The ball wasn't clear from the free kick and Joe Newell followed up with that goal. So 1-0 for Hibs at Easter Road. Earlier Celtic 4, Rangers 0 at Celtic Park. Livingston 1-0 win. Montagna with a goal in 28 minutes, beating Hearts by 1-0. One, uh, one goal to nil through at Almond Vale. Motherwell nil, Dundee United nil. Kevin Van Veen uh, had a penalty saved. He missed a couple of other great chances. Could have himself a hat-trick this afternoon. We'll discuss the vacancy at Dundee United. Is Liam Fox the man? for the job. Ross County uh, are behind against Aberdeen. Willie Miller Full always saying, yep. Full but, time Kenny, big win it is for Air United. It's Morton 1, Air United 2. Yeah, they stay top off the table. Do Air United, what a start to the season for them. Been a poor start to the season for Ross County. They show great promise that opening day through at Tynecaster. They lost the game, but played very well with Miller in that game. But behind here, late, late on in Dingwall. Yeah, and, and they're committing men forward and almost uh, left themselves totally open uh, again. There are two Aberdeen players uh, looking to hit them in the break. And uh, actually, Ross McCrory is running from his own half, and Majofsky, Majofsky gets a touch on it, and he's kind of a facing away uh, towards the, the byline, and he's got to get a touch like a, a, over his shoulder uh, for, for Ross McCrory. If he does that, Ross McCrory is right in and goal, but they're just throwing caution to the wind. They probably have to. They've only got a few minutes here to salvage something from this game. They've done OK in the game. It hasn't been a, a brilliant performance, but uh, they've competed very well. You know, but Aberdeen probably having the, the better of the chances and, and having more possession. Look as though they're going to take the three points. Yeah, just seeing Davy Martindale, pictures Leanne coming out of him celebrating with the fans there. What, what a job he's doing at that club. Yeah, oh, it's excellent, isn't it? Um, and I think every week on week, it, Livingston seem to be getting better to me. I think the, the players that they've brought in, I think the addition to Nubly this season in particular, um, bringing him back from that loan spell at our broth, he's get better. And they've now got a bit oh, of... Oh, it's an equaliser! Oh, no, it's up the lead. It's an equaliser! Unbelievable, <laughs> an equaliser for... Ross County, a, a Kayo that's got the goal, the substitute that's come on, it's the long throw from uh, Baldwin on the right-hand side. Aberdeen don't deal with it, it bobbles about, and the substitute pops up at the back post to put it into the back of the net. It's been a gamble for Malky Mackay, but it's paid off. They've thrown men forward in the last few minutes, and they've managed to get that equaliser. What a last five minutes, forget about the rest. Give me the five minutes, time and time again. 1-1 one, one here at Dingwall. Uh, Jim Goodwin's going to be furious with that, will he, isn't it? Couple of opportunities to go and clear the lines. Aberdeen don't deal with it. As you say, it comes from that long throw-in. There's a flick on, then the keeper makes a save. It comes back out. They could get bodies in front. They don't block it. And Akayo stabs it, well, it home. Leon. That's it. Wow. All finished. Quite incredible. The Aberdeen players go to the ground. But to be fair... You know, I don't think it's far off the right result, to be honest, because neither team had played particularly well. It's been competitive, it's been frantic. It looked as though the Dons were going to take the three points, but that fighting spirit from Ross County earned them a point here at Dingwall this afternoon to send their fans home reasonably happy. Willie, where did the additional time come from? The five it... minutes, that there, there was a few injuries, yeah, there was... Because uh, it looks as, a, as if couple... it was about six... Over six minutes has been was played. Was it over six? Yeah. It was only five that was put up. So, yeah, I, I didn't see too many injuries in, no. in the time added on. So I don't know where that's came from. 
Yeah, interesting to hear the reaction of Jim Googan there to that added time, the late, late show from Ross County. A really poor spectacle in the first half, but real drama late on. Duke with a, a really nice finish for the wayside and right at the death there, an equaliser uh, for the home side up there in Dingwall. What, what has been your, your, your pick of the day, Michael? Show? What's the story that we should be looking at in the, in the last hour of this programme? I mean, there's there's nothing that uh, is you know hugely surprising. The the well, probably you know what I'll, I'll go back on that. St. Johnson's performance there and the result, yeah. the fact of buying three goals and um, you know victory against St. Mirren, who were in good form. That's probably the the, the biggest standout from from this afternoon. Um, huge disappointment for Hearts that they've not been able to get anything from the game. Uh, at Livingston and obviously huge uh, amounts of uh, drama in the, the last five minutes up in Dingwall but um, yeah, the biggest story I would think is the, the St Johnston performance and result and what it does to, to, you know, for me is that it really starts to bunch up the, the, the table because you would have looked at um, Motherwell right at the start of the season and there's question marks about how they were going to do they've been brilliant and Stevie Hamill looks like he's he's been able to piece things together very quickly and um, St Mirren, question marks obviously with Stephen Robinson um, at the back end of last season. How are they going to do? And they've had some good results so far. And St Johnston were the other ones that were lingering around that bottom end that you would have had uh, concern about. But the recruitment that they've been able to finish the window with has given them a far better cutting edge to the top end of the park, which, which gives them the, the, the ability to be able to, to win games. And that, that is hugely... Um, uh, important for Callum Davidson just relieving a bit of pressure off the back line as well so St Johnston are going to be um, in far great, uh, greater fettle now that the window's closed and the side that they've put together and that performance and result there shows that yeah, so six games uh, played in the top flight fixtures. You know, just looking at the table, of course, brought you the game earlier on this afternoon. Celtic beating Rangers by four goals to nil to open up a five-point advantage at the top of the table. We'll, we'll get more reaction to that later in the programme. I heard from both managers earlier on that Giovanni Van Bronker said it was a period of reflection 